no knowns and unknown. I'm sorry, there's no knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. Something to that, ex uh, uh, to that effect. But this book is absolutely brilliant. So again, I'm thrilled, you know, as somebody who worked as a quantitative analyst, as a financial engineer, somebody with a, not a PhD, but I got my master's science and, and spent my time there and was disgusted, frankly, not only with the failure of the models, but the failures of uh, the moral hazards in modern finance. Well, I really love that he's extrapolated beyond finance and really talking about all kinds of um, Again, to use kind of the popular parlance, these black swans. So without further ado, I'm going to bring him on. He's calling all the way from Austria, so I'm really thrilled to just have this opportunity to share his ideas with you. Uh, Dr. Casti, are you, are you with us right now? I'm with you, Jake. Wonderful. Thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate it. Yeah, pleasure. So X events. You know, I, I'm currently writing my own book called Endonomics, and I'm talking about, you know, the collapse of the United States, as I see because of debt. Now, in my research, I stumbled onto you via uh, Nassim Tlaib, and he gave you such a glowing review. I read your book and absolutely brilliant. I love it. X Events, and you even have a website, right? X-Events.com, or what, what is that website? Uh, it's X-Events.com, but with no dash. Okay, so X-Events.com. So for those people who haven't had the benefit, like myself, to uh, peruse this really great work, um, t tell people kind of the elevator pitch. What is it that you're trying to get across with this, this book? Okay, Jake. Well, the basic question that this book addresses is what do you, how do you characterize and measure risk when you're working in an environment in which you cannot use probability and statistics, when you don't have enough data or you don't have a model that you can believe in? What do you do? There's plenty of risk to go around. But the usual tools of the risk analyst involve calculating likelihoods or probability of this happening or not happening and so on. And there are just plenty of what I call unknown unknowns, events that either have happened so infrequently that we have no meaningful database to build a probability distribution around, or they may be, they've never happened before at all. And what do you do then? And so this book is really my answer to that question. Yeah, I love this, especially, I mean, for me, coming from, I, I have a background in financial engineering, and so I really love this because uh, when I was fresh out of grad school, I worked for a company called Financial Engineering Associates, and everybody was so reliant upon this VAR, this value at risk measurement. Uh, yeah. and, and I find it almost ironic now that uh, JP Morgan who kind of invented, you know, the risk metrics and all this kind of came up and really uh, supported and subsidized this uh, value at risk, this VAR, really seems to have gotten a bit in the rear end recently with it. I think they <laughs> lost like $2 billion or some estimates or $6 billion. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's really now, amazing. Now, one of the guys, and I'm curious of your perspective, and I'm going to be a nerd here. I know we may lose some of our audience, but I don't get a chance to, to speak to somebody with your uh, your background that often, so I'm going to be indulgent for just a moment. I actually named my, my son, my uh, firstborn son, Danzig, after uh, Van Danzig for extreme value theory because I always felt, at least if you're looking at the tail in this EVT approach, <laughs> that you might have a better chance... But you're, you're dealing with even more, like, uh, from my understanding, you're doing modeling that's more like fluid dynamics, or, I mean, how is it that you're, you're approaching these X events? Well, okay, first of all, my, um, my idea is that we need a new paradigm, that is a statistics paradigm in which we have data and we can actually compute some kind of a probability distribution that we might believe in at least a little bit. Uh, that, that's fine for what I call the normal regime. Events, and, and it's, it's kind of a small pun, because it's in, the, it's in the regime where methods that revolve around the normal distribution, the bell-shaped curve, re work at least moderately well. But when you get into the X-events regime, and if we had these probability distributions, which we don't, these would be the events way, way out on the tails, the extremes then uh, you need to do something else. You need a new paradigm. And so since I'm a complexity scientist by 
practice and by training, actually. I, I'm thinking that one way to address this question of measuring or characterizing risk is to basically talk about the problem when systems, human systems usually, but not necessarily, when they start becoming so complex that the, let's say, managers or regulators of the system, they don't understand them anymore. And the level of complexity mismatch between the system itself and the controllers, if you like, or the regulators, that if that mismatch starts growing to the point where it is too large, then either that gap has to be reduced, usually by the high complexity process downsizing, voluntarily perhaps, or you're going to get a crash. You get, it's like stretching a rubber band. You keep stretching and stretching, and you can feel in the tension in your arms when you're getting near the elastic limit. And if you keep stretching, uh, you're gonna, it, the thing is going to break. And this is basically what happens in th my argument is that this is the underlying cause of almost all, uh, I'll call them crashes or extreme events, in both human and natural phenomena. My book is really addressed to extreme events that are caused by human activity or human inattention, miscommunication, misunderstanding, malevolence, or just plain stupidity. Uh, but I think that the idea may have greater currency and may actually be usable even in uh, the areas of the natural sciences, earthquakes, hurricanes, and so on. I haven't gone down that route yet, but that's next on my hit list. <laughs> well, I can't wait for it. I mean, I'm really now a, a huge fan. I mean, I'm glad that you're on my radar because your work is really brilliant. And, of course, you know, I'm coming from more finance, so to me this has echoes of kind of uh, what you're talking about, the regulators and the gap between knowledge, you know, these unknown unknowns. Reminds yeah. me a lot of kind of the criticisms of um, that uh, F.A. Hayek kind of had about uh, economic planning, that in some ways things get so complicated that you have to just let go. You can't try to control these things because it gets beyond your your control, but then it also has these nice echoes of, of Benoit Mandelbrot and his, you know, his criticisms of kind of the, the Gaussian financial engineering built upon these, these normal distributions and whatnot. Um, but you go deeper. I mean, you're talking the failure of the internet, the failure of the food supply chain, um, an EMP that would just totally take out the entire uh, electrical system of our country, uh, nuclear, oil supplies, uh, like flu pandemics. This is so cool. I mean, I can't imagine. Well, it's, it's a little bit extreme. I mean, the, those examples that you just mentioned, which are the things that constitute part two of my book, they're really there just to sort of underscore the point that I've just made a moment ago about complexity overload, complexity mismatch, to illustrate that process, how it could happen in reality. Now, I, I want to emphasize that despite the subtitle of my book, which is The Collapse <laughs> of Everything, which I did not like, and the publisher sort of forced it upon me. To be, I, I at least wanted him to put a question mark at the end of it, but uh, no dice. Okay, uh, well, well, hold on just a second. Can you hang with us for one more second? Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm here. I'm absolutely fascinated with this. We've got a commercial break. We've got to keep the lights on. Uh, we're speaking with John Casty, Dr. Casty, uh, author of X Events. Check out xevents.com. Uh, talking more about mathematics and predicting the future if we can do it. Come on back. K-Talk, the voice of Utah. Are you or someone you care about suffering from substance abuse, addictive behaviors, anxiety, or depression? If you have found that conventional therapies don't work, listen close. There is a way to regain joy in life. Theta Wellness Center's advanced technology produces lasting results. Unlike conventional therapies that only offer counseling and abstinence, Theta Wellness Centers utilize the technologically advanced and effective Theta Chamber, which quite literally reprograms and re-educates the brain. The Theta Chamber returns brain chemistry to balance with newly formed neuropathways. Counseling therapy is good. Reprogramming the brain is better. Combining both is the path to a new life. There is no risk in learning more. Check us out at ThetaWellnessCenter.com or be one of the first of 25 callers to schedule a no obligation consultation and receive the first Theta Chamber treatment absolutely free. 
Call 888-429-0082. That's 888-429-0082. Rediscover the joy in your life. Theta Wellness Center. Call today. 888-429-0082. I'm Angie Larson. If you or someone you know suffers with cold sores, then listen closely. The Vipro 3000 is the new advanced way to safely and painlessly prevent cold sores before they occur. The Vipro 3000 also shortens the healing time for existing sores. Order the Vipro 3000 now and fight back. Call 1-800-680-PAIN or visit Vipro3000.com. That's Vipro3000.com or 1-800-680-PAIN. Wake up without yuck in your lungs or the dark cloud of lung cancer or heart disease looming over your future. Have the energy and health you deserve by simply calling Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis at 801-738-5390. Forget what you've seen from TV and the movies. Hypnosis is powerful and natural and has been accepted by the American Medical Association since the 1950s. Our methods have proven time and again to be more effective than pills, patches, gum, and willpower for quitting smoking. If you've tried the rest, now call the best. Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. That's Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. Be sure to ask about our proven weight loss and natural breast enlargement programs. Visit us online at slchypnosis.com. The Voice of Utah, AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. Long distance information, give me Memphis, Tennessee. All right, all right, enough of the bumpers. I'm getting right to this guest because I am uh, I'm being selfish today. I'm so thrilled, and I'm, I'm happy to turn you guys on to him as well. Uh, Dr. John Casty. Um, has written a book, X Events. You can go to xevents.com. I'm sure, uh, Dr. Casty, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still with you, Jake. Okay, great. Um, any preferred place for people to pick up a copy of this? Amazon, maybe Barnes & Noble, I don't know. Well, listen, first of all, I want to uh, put in a small disclaimer about that website, xevents.com. It exists, and you'll get something if you go there. But at the moment, it, it's, it's in a kind of embryonic stage, I okay. have to admit. And so I think that if you really want to see some, what, uh, something about this book, I would recommend that your listeners go to a search engine, Google being one of them, and search under the title of the book, X-Events, and then plus, then my name, Casti, okay. C-A-S-T-I. And you'll get zillions of hits, which basically show the action that the book is getting in the blogosphere and the kinds of comments and, and unofficial, let's say, reviews that bloggers have written and so on. And then, then you'll get a, in this case, statistically significant sample <laughs> of what people are thinking about this book. And, and some of the sites are also uh, places where you can actually order the book. Uh, or but my personal opinion is, uh, unless you're out in the middle of nowhere, if, there, if, there, if you live somewhere where there still actually even exists a bookstore, uh, the best thing is just go in and get it in your hands and feel it and look at it. Of course, I know people in America right now, they're keen on e-books. And I mean, this, this really seems to be taking over the uh, book reading world. Uh, it's not happening in Europe, I might add. Uh, but that's another possi- uh, but that's another possibility. You know, you can get the book from Amazon in Kindle form, or you can get it from Barnes and Noble for your Nook. Uh, yeah, it's all over the place. So now, now uh, you're in uh, you're in Austria right now, is that right? I live in Vienna. Yes. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. I just got back from Italy about three days ago, oh, and okay. uh, Vienna is on my short list just because of. Uh, I mean, obviously, I know it's beautiful and 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 whatnot, but. Uh, for me, a lot of my intellectual history uh, heroes also are, uh, you know, from Vienna in kind of the early 20th century. Yeah, um, right. You know, the Wittgensteins and whatnot. Now, the Girdle uh, and the lots of others. Th- yeah. I mean, it's just it was such a fertile place for for the big thinkers of the 20th century. Uh, I'm curious about. How, you know, how to think about this because I'm fascinated in with learning how to learn, and. I had a very typical financial engineering uh, experience with my education, very much about 
you know, these uh, Gaussian-based models and whatnot. But, you know, I did take it upon myself to actually figure out <laughs> early on that uh, there were some serious problems. One of the things that seems so basic to me in our culture, uh, you were talking about a paradigm shift, and it takes me kind of to this idea of anomalies. And it seems to me that our culture, or at least in the West, seems, you know, these people who call themselves skeptics about things, they seem to be so obsessed with type one errors, these these uh, false positives, which is great. But it seems yeah. to me there's a, such a huge glaring deficit of people who care about type two errors, false negatives. It seems almost yeah. like you get called a kook if you're like looking for these p patterns that may not have existed before. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm in either of those categories. I, I just have spent a lot of time in the complex systems world. I mean, I spent many years working in the Santa Fe Institute mm. uh, in one of my intermezzos away from Vienna. I mean, I've been in and out of Vienna and in between for about 40 years now. And so uh, one of those out of Vienna periods was spent in Santa Fe for about a decade, actually. And, and so I got very turned on uh, to the whole idea of complex systems. And then when I came back to Vienna, and to a position at the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, the director there asked me to start some new program, something new, different. And so I chose the theme of extreme events in human society. I became very keen on the problems of critical infrastructures and how uh, seemingly innocuous events, in some cases, can basically kill the whole system over the edge. And, and you get some cascading effects, and all of a sudden you're back in living a 19th century way of life. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, so, that's yeah. one of the things, like you'd mentioned infrastructure. You know, I really see, and, and you actually might have better perspective than, than I because, you, you know, you're not in the United States. But I see some real problems, obviously, with this infrastructure. I see a lot of the same things as you see in the, in the you, you talk about collapses, about the collapse of uh, the infrastructure where the trash doesn't get picked up. And there's yeah. kind of this, you know, regime change and what, you know, happened in the Soviet Union, the Ottoman Empire, the, the British Empire. It, I'm seeing a very similar stretching of the rubber band here in the United States. I'm curious on your perspective on that. I know you talk about the collapse of globalism. Uh, but what about with, for for example, uh, the United States in particular, kind of our uh, hegemony, you know, the hegemony that we have here? Well, first of all, I, I, I want to put in a small plug for my current residence. One of the reasons I like living in Vienna is that I'm a kind of guy who likes things that work. And this seems to be both a country and a city where everything works all the time. It's nice and reliable. It's like going back to the 1960s. <laughs> Uh, but in any case, last time I was in America, which wasn't long ago, I was a little bit, uh, I was in Santa Fe, actually, for a week at the end of May. And, and I, it was a little bit distressing to me, to be truthful, because I hadn't been back in the country for you know, a year, maybe a year and a half. And, and you know, I saw all sorts of signs of, um, early warning signs of kind of an eroding infrastructure. You know, the roads weren't really repaired very much, and some of the, uh, uh, like the water supply in the hotel I was staying was a little bit intermittent from time to time. And not, nothing, you know, uh, game changer, no game changers, but just uh, sort of made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And I think that the USA's role as sort of a dominant world power, uh, it, it's, it's on the downhill slope. It doesn't mean that the USA is going to sort of vanish into uh, like the Ottoman Empire, but it means that it's going to become one of many major players. Yeah, I, I see it like, uh, you know, I, I call my perspective on this similar, I think, to yours. I, I call myself an apocaloptimist, that <laughs> I see it collapsing. But you know how, like, the British Empire, it collapsed, but it was actually great for Britain. They've never been richer, and now they don't have all these this empire it's good for i think that the collapse of the american empire i i'm i'm paraphrasing johan gultung uh a peace uh scholar that the collapse of the american empire will be great for the american republic i'm hoping yeah well somebody in one of the reviews of this book of my next events uh i made a nice remark they said john casty is the 
optimist of the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an apocalypse optimist too. I, I, well, that's according to that reviewer. I never thought of myself as, <laughs> as having anything to do with an apocalypse, but there it is. My publisher sort of forced it upon me. But but I, I think that you're, you've really hit on a very crucial and, and, and a very important point, and that is that these extreme events, and that, you know, pick your, uh, the one, the collapse of the power grid, uh, a major pandemic, et cetera, they're terrible. If they happen... In the short term, there's a huge loss of life, money, uh, psychic disturbance, and whatever. And, and you look at it and you say, we have to do everything we possibly can to prevent that. But m part of my argument is, first of all, these things happen, and, and, and to a large degree, you can't really prevent them. Uh, you sometimes can mitigate their consequences, or maybe you can stave off the day of accounting, but they will happen. And, but they shouldn't be regarded as an unmitigated problem. It's as much an opportunity as a problem. And I, I was in Japan uh, in April, and I gave a series of lectures in Tokyo, nine lectures in five days, actually. And each one of those talks, I meant it was each to a different group, and I said the same thing at, at one point. I said, you know, you guys are now one year after Fukushima. And you probably are thinking this was the worst thing that ever happened to Japan. You know, loss of life, uh, a land that's uninhabitable now, and a whole bunch of other nasty things. But I said, I think that if I went to sleep today for, say, 10, maybe 15 years, and when I woke up, I'd be willing to bet that the vast majority of you sitting in this room would tell me, no, that wasn't the worst thing that happened. It was the best thing that ever happened to Japan because it forced us, it blasted us into a new orbit, forced us to reconsider every aspect of our society and our way of doing business and the relationships between the government and the business community, et cetera, and so forth. And it gives you the opportunity, it, it creates new eco-niches or degrees of freedom for innovation in a social and economic and uh, uh, practical way. So you're, you're completely right, Jake. Leaving center stage is by no means uh, a disaster. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be a good thing. I'm, but I'm curious your view uh, based upon, again, your perspectives, your modeling, your, your background. Uh, T.S. Eliot, a uh, famous poet, wrote a, 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 a poem called The Hollow Men. And in the end, he basically, the, the point is, okay, I'll stop grandstanding uh, and being pretentious. The point is, is he says, this is how the world ends. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Yeah. With these kind yeah. of collapses, you know, let's just say something that would hit home, the collapse of globalism, where the infrastructure, that kind of stuff really yeah. has a problem. It, does it happen, bam, like that? Or, you know, and I know I, it, it, there, there's shades of gray here, but is it a whimper or is it a bang? Okay, first of all, uh, the time scale is interesting because I've listed in part two of my book, X Events, 11 different, uh, kinds of extreme events. Yes, it's awesome. And, and they're very different. Uh, not just the events themselves, but the time scales. And you, you, you talked about the end of globalism. This isn't something that just you wake up one morning and all of a sudden it's gone. Right. Uh, it's, it, it unfolds over a period of, of probably of years. So for the whipper uh, and the bang, it's actually because of the, the time window. Uh, yeah, well, and that's right. Uh, an, another one in that list of 11 is an electromagnetic pulse. And that comes about if you set off a nuclear weapon high up in the atmosphere. Uh, it uh, creates a surge of electrical energy that comes down and basically uh, shorts out every kind of electrical circuit that isn't shielded. You know, everything that has these very sensitive microcircuitry that can be blown out. And all of a sudden, everything, comes, everything stops, in, uh, not overnight, instantly. So that's about a, kind of an ultra short time scale uh, event. Uh, and, and you have every, like many things in between, a global pandemic. Look at what's happening just in these very days right now, uh, a new outbreak of Ebola fever in Uganda. Well, if that sort of uh, got a foothold and started moving around the world, yeah, millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people would die, but 
it's not going to happen overnight. It, it will be a period of months. Look, look at the Spanish flu of 1918. That's a good uh, counter. I mean, a good example as well. Uh, so, so these things, uh, they're all X events, but their time scale is very different. And in some, in some way, the magnitude of the the Xness, if you like, is really very tied up with this uh, unfolding time. So the short unfolding time usually is something that's usually more damage, very damaged, because you don't have any time to sort of even start adjusting to it. Uh, it's just wham, and it's there. So, so you talk about this kind of awakening, this uh, paradigm shift. So if you could right now somehow massively just – uh, have your own ev- X event that somehow you're able to change, uh, you know, the curriculum that's being taught to people with regards to this paradigm shift. What would that be? I mean, how, what is the point that you would like to get across that we need to shed and and get rid of that old skin and adopt this new skin? What is that? Well, the, if since you have a mathematical background, I mean, uh, I want to hasten to add for the uh, benefit of your listeners that I took great pains in this book. In fact, the first book that I've ever written that does not have a single formula, yeah, no equation, equations, graph, no. chart, <laughs> uh, picture. It's just a, 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 what I think of as a good idea. I, I see one table. I see one table. As there, and there. that's it. And you'll see if you read it in the text shortly after that. It said, "I promise, this is the only table in the whole book," <laughs> uh, and and a lot of stories. And, and that's why I think the book has been picked up for foreign. I think there are now 14 or 15 foreign editions that are underway wow. and will start appearing in the next uh, few months. Um, so uh, it's. Uh, but how would I change the curriculum? I, I would basically. I, w- I don't think I would change the curriculum. I would just say there are two different regimes, two different categories of events here. There's what I called earlier the normal regime, the kinds of you call them the known unknowns where you you have data or you ha- have a model or maybe you have both and you can very productively use dynamical system theory probability and statistics and whatever to get a handle on uh, what's going to happen next and how likely it is but then you get into the extreme events regime the x events regime those methods uh, they're not available to you because you don't have uh, the necessary conditions to use them you don't have any data and so we need to think about uh, how do we measure risk? How, how do we measure how far that rubber band has been stretched? Uh, and uh, my answer, at least provisional answer in this book, and it's really more of a call to arms for a research program. It's not a book describing a body of already um, executed research. It is to say, I think that uh, the idea of complexity overload is a good starting point for replacing the idea of probabilities but in the ex events regime and not the normal regime. So to make that distinction between the normal regime and the ex events regime and to recognize that you need different concepts, different ideas, and different tools in each regime. This is, this is absolutely brilliant. Uh, ex events is the book. John Casty, PhD, is the author. Uh, and again, all the way from Austria, I appreciate I know the time zone change is, is a bit uh, of a hurdle. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to help us understand these things. And have a great vacation. I understand you're going on vacation, so thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I'm going sir. to the Scottish Highlands tomorrow to get away from all the heat here this summer. <laughs> Beautiful. Some place well, where it's cold. Well, thank you again so much, sir. Okay, Jake. Nice being with you. Okay, take Bye-bye. care. Guys, we'll be right back. Come on back. Gung Ho gives you clinically proven focus, attention, and concentration. A major benefit of Gung Ho is its increased focus and concentration. The ability to focus requires an adequate ongoing supply of energy and healthy communication between neurons. Gung Ho supports a natural brain metabolism. Find Gung Ho at k-talk.com. Eat like focus. You're over 40. Having trouble reading street signs, driving is getting scary, and reading isn't fun anymore. Sound familiar? Well, that's the curse of cataracts. I know, I went through it. Then I went to the Eye Institute of Utah, and in a matter of minutes, the problem was solved. No pain, no discomfort, and by that evening, I had the vision I'd enjoyed as a teenager. 
Years ago, cataract surgery was a huge deal. Now, thanks to modern LensX laser technology, the whole procedure is over in a matter of minutes with no pain or discomfort, and Medicare pays most of the cost. Don't trust your vision to just anyone. You want the very best, and for me, that was Dr. Sioni and the other highly trained specialists at the Eye Institute of Utah. They've done thousands of successful procedures, and they're so advanced that other doctors come from all over the world to study under their guidance. Call now for a free evaluation, 801-803-6968. That's 801-803-6968. Call 801-803-6968 now for a free evaluation. Politicians may try to convince you that they can create jobs, but the cold fact is that politicians don't create jobs, entrepreneurs do. Are you barely surviving in this economy but want to learn how to thrive in this economy? Are you tired of the rat race and burn with the desire to be your own boss? We've all heard the parable that if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. But if you teach that man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. Are you ready to learn how to fish? Join proven entrepreneur, best-selling author, and host of Mental Self-Defense Radio, Jake Shannon, at the upcoming weekend bootstrap entrepreneurship training right here in Salt Lake City. This Bootstrap Entrepreneurship Bootcamp is strictly limited to only 15 participants and is offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Learn more now at www.entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. That's entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. Entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. The Voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. Talk. Talk to each other. All right, guys. Welcome back. Mental Self-Defense Radio. I am Jake Shannon. Uh, really fun guest calling all the way from Austria. John Casty, PhD, author of X Events, The Collapse of Everything. <laughs> Uh, really, really cool. You can check out the website, X Events, all one word, xevents.com. Uh, but certainly get your hands on this book. I'm going to, I mean, again, brilliant. If you missed it, sorry, guys, you're going to have to go uh, over to the website, k-talk.com, hit show archives, find my name uh, about 15 minutes after this show is over today. So about 15 minutes past 4 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, you can then listen and learn. The guy's brilliant. Uh, does a lot of work with the Santa Fe Institute, which uh, I've had my eye on for a long time. Uh, again, they do a lot of the chaos theory, a lot of the uh, complexity theory. And so for myself, as somebody interested in modeling risk, these guys are cutting edge. Um, and again, echoes of Hayek, echoes of Benoit Mandelbrot, uh, of course, Nassim Tlaib. I opened it up, and the cool thing is, is you know, in the dedication, he says, to connoisseurs, of the unknown unknowns again so John Casty PhD uh, complexity scientist but some of this is just awesome I mean he goes through so obviously explains his premise in part one part two then he goes through talking about you know these extreme events but I'm sorry people extreme events this is the, this is the point that like Nassim Tlaib makes in in the black swan extreme events happen more often than predicted by normal statistics. And by normal, I mean a Gaussian normal distribution statistics with normal tails, not fat tails. But he goes through in part two uh, talking about long-term widespread failure of the internet, what would happen, how that could happen, breakdown of the global food supply system, uh, continent-wide electronic, electromagnetic pulse destroys all electronics, uh, the collapse of globalization, um, the destruction of the Earth through the creation of exotic particles like they're doing over at CERN, uh, you know, for discovering all these new things and potentially <laughs> creating crazy things, um, destabilization, uh, destabilization of the nuclear landscape, uh, drying up of the world oil supplies, a global pandemic, failure of the electric power grid and clean water supply, uh, intelligent robots overthrowing humanity this is something that i am quite actually concerned with i post about this quite a bit on facebook about these uh these robots i mean a total terminator situation where skynet comes alive he deals with that here um global deflation and the collapse of world financial markets oh 
interesting. Something I've been talking about. One third of the book I'm writing. And dynamics about deflation. Ah, oh, love speaking to people like that. Listening. Brilliant. You know, I, the future, I, like John Casty, you know, the, what I, the way I term it is I call myself an apocalyptic optimist. I think that there will be a giant collapse, especially financially speaking. That's where my expertise lies. Uh, coming soon. 10, 15 years tops. Uh, but I don't see that as a bad thing. I really, really don't. I think it's going to be great. Again, I look at the British Empire. They've never been stronger economically. The standard of living has never been better in uh, the UK. Because they don't have that giant albatross of all the empire hanging around their neck. Fascinating stuff. Great book. Pick it up. X Events. John Casti. C-A-S-T-I. And again, if you missed it, please go back. I mean, it was great. He called all the way from Austria. Brilliant guy. And it's so such an interesting time in which we live. Now, why am I an apocal optimist instead of an apocal pessimist or whatever? <laughs> because largely technology and markets, the internet, I'm old enough to remember a time before the internet, what it was like, and to live in a time after and to take advantage of it. And now we're on the cusp of this new technology have you heard about this? These, uh, these 3D printers? It's such a lame way of <laughs> describing what it is. But I mean, I guess it is apt in the sense that you can print stuff. But okay, you know what it's like? It's like Star Trek. And they hit the replicator button and they can just create whatever they want out of molecules. I mean, that's really where we're heading right now. I, I was over at Reason Magazine. They have this really fun article uh, J.D. Tuchili, uh Monday, July 30th. So yesterday, and the name of the article is Do 3D Printers Make Prohibitions Impossible? And he quotes this magazine, Extreme Tech. Uh, An American gunsmith has become the first person to construct and shoot a pistol partly made out of plastic 3D printed parts. The creator... User Have Blue from the AR-15 forum has repeatedly fired 200 rounds with his plastic part pistol without any sign of wear and tear. Have Blue's uh, custom creation is a 22 caliber pistol formed from a 3D printed AR-15 lower receiver and a normal commercial upper. In other words, the main body of the gun is plastic, while the chamber where the bullets are actually struck is solid metal. The lower receiver was created using a fairly old school Stratasys 3D printer using a normal plastic resin. Have Blue estimates uh, estimates that it costs around thirty dollars of resin to create the lower receiver, uh, but quote maker bots and the other low cost printers exploding onto the market would bring this cost down to perhaps ten bucks. End quote. Commercial off the shelf assault rifle uh, lower receivers are a lot more expensive. Anyway, the point is we're getting to the point where you could just print anything, literally print anything, and with nanotechnology around the corner, literally scarcity will be a thing in the past. Now, I'm not saying that's right around the corner. We don't know. Depends on these, you know, the way scientific revolutions happen, kind of sometimes punctuated in their advances. Staggering. Jagged kind of lurches forward and backward and whatnot. I don't think it's a steady progress, as some people might think. But this is really, really crazy. And they're talking about uh, you can create custom drugs now. I scroll down this article. Do 3D printers make prohibitions impossible? Uh, scroll down. Scientists at the University of Glasgow, which is where Casty, uh, he's going to Scotland, and that's where the University of Glasgow is. I think that's where Adam Smith had his professorship, the founder of modern economics. Anyway, scientists at the University of Glasgow have used a relatively low-cost system to synthesize chemical compounds with the intention of developing the means to create custom drugs. That may well mean the end of the orphan drug problem around the world and very real 
price drops on pharmaceuticals from the BBC. Quote, Researchers have used a 1,200-pound system to create a, round, a range of organic compounds in inorganic clusters, some of which are used to create cancer treatments. Longer term, the scientists say the process could be used to make customized medicines. They predict the technique will be used by pharmaceutical firms within five years and by the public within 20 and then they quote within the article, we are showing that you could take chemical constituents, pass them through a printer, and create what is effectively a chemical synthesizer in which the reaction occurs, allowing you to get out something different at the end. We're extrapolating from that to say that in the future, you could buy common chemicals, slot them into some, something that 3D prints, just press a button to mix the ingredients and filter them through the architecture, and at the bottom, you'd get out your prescription drug. So, all of you people, I'm sure our politicians will try to figure out some way to manipulate you and show you that it's not in your best interest to, to just do what the heck you want to do and create anything out of nothing for no cost. Please, when that time comes, or if it's in your, your children's time, please plant the seed. No, you're a grown man or a grown woman and you can handle it. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. It's really a very fascinating time in which we live. An exciting time. A time when, you know, th there's talk about lifespans really uh, extending. It really is an amazing time. So this is why I'm an apocalyptimist. And I look at these little, these little hiccups, these collapses. What happens after a collapse? You rebuild. And hopefully what I'm Hoping is that by being ahead of the curve, we could prepare those people who rebuild to have half a brain, to be kind, honest. People who will afford liberty to other people, even if they don't necessarily agree with it, as long as whatever they do is peaceful. An apocalyptic optimist, that's me. Now, call in number 801 254 5855. Yesterday, and we're fast approaching uh, the end of the first hour already. Yesterday, I went in depth a bit on the Batman shooter. Some of the anomalies, some of the things that don't quite add up, uh, in particular, the witness testimonies. Some of the strange connections, his family. One of the things that is, is being kind of promulgated through the, through the interwebs, although I am searching for a confirmation, and if anybody out there can help me with this, I would sincerely appreciate it. I'm trying to find a confirmation of this fact because I warned you guys when I left, go listen to the archives, okay? I warned you, the LIBOR scheme, this, this scam, this, this scandal, is the largest. You thought WorldCom, you thought Enron, you thought Bernie Madoff. Those are mere pimples on the butt cheek of this LIBOR scam. This scam affects the most people across the planet of any other financial scandal in recorded history. In a way that if every single person sued the banks for what they did, it would certainly be an X event. It would, bam, bring the collapse. Bam, quick. It is huge. They're culpable, a smoking gun, all of that. Now, how is that connected to this Batman shooting? I mentioned yesterday the father of this guy that did the Batman shooting. James Holmes, the guy with the stupid red hair, the psychopath that shot everybody, supposedly. We don't know yet, but it certainly seems that way. Robert Holmes is his father. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now, I noted as I was digging around while I was gone that his father has done special research for DARPA, which is the kind of advanced research arm of the defense industry here in the United States. I mean, it really, they're doing the crazy stuff. 
And it's crazy when they just let us know what they're working on. So much of it is classified and that we have no idea. And we do know that uh, MK Ultra, whatnot, they had some pretty sophisticated stuff. And we only got like 15% of the documentation because about 85% of it was destroyed before the, uh, the church, um, before the, the Senate hearings on all that uh, mind control and uh, human experimentation done by the government. So it's, it's, again, this is not controversial. These are facts. What's interesting here is the connection. So obviously we know that that kind of stuff happened. I'm fairly confident that they got busted, but they didn't stop doing that kind of thing. Government's always doing this nefarious stuff uh, with, you know, black ops and, and uh, black budgets that you can't see that are financed through cocaine sales. And, you know, I mean, it's just not controversial at this point, I hope for you. Well, not only did uh, James Holmes' father have connections to DARPA and whatnot, f from what I understand, and I'm tr this is what I'm trying to confirm, he is the lead scientist for FICO, you know, who does the credit scores? And he did a model to find fraud. Supposedly, he's set to go to the Senate and testify again against all the banks for this uh, LIBOR scam. Two weeks ahead, and then boom, this happens. Interesting. I'm not sure. I need the confirmation. Maybe you know. Come on back after the break, guys. Are you ready for some fun? It's time to get out and play. Grab your kids, grandkids, and the kid in you. Experience the fun of radio-controlled cars, trucks, boats, and helicopters. Visit www.primehobbies.com, your online hobby store. We only stock main brand products. Traxxas radio-controlled cars and trucks. HPI Racing, Align Helicopters, Team Associated, and Quest Aerospace. If you're tired of buying and buying and buying the discount store junk, stop by PrimeHobbies.com and purchase a vehicle that will last for years with parts support to keep you up and running. Let Prime Hobbies be your number one trusted online hobby superstore. For fun delivered right to your door, go to PrimeHobbies.com. That's www.PrimeHobbies.com. Com. Let the fun begin. www.primehobbies.com Hey, this is Jake the Computer Guy from PC Laptops. It's back to school time and normally I'm all bummed out because summer rules. But not this year because I got a brand new PC Laptops Titan computer featuring the Intel Core i7 processor. <laughs> You know, a lot of companies build crappy computers. These companies beat the snot out of you trying to sell you some rip-off extended warranty. If any store ever tries to sell you a rip-off extended warranty, just say don't rip me off and go straight to PC Laptops. All new PC Laptops desktop computers come with a lifetime service and parts warranty. Nobody else does that. That means if your hard drive blows up in 10 years, you're covered at 100%. And to make it extra fluffy, we're doing zero down, zero interest for a whole year on any new PC Laptops computer. OAC. Plus, if you have a student or faculty ID will give you an extra $100 off any new computer. Call us at 1-877-596-SAVE or check us out at PCLaptops.com. That's PCLaptops.com because at PC Laptops, we love you. You're listening to Utah's first number one talk station, K-Talk AM 630, KTKK, Sandy Salt Lake City. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. NBC News Radio, I'm Luke Russert on Capitol Hill, where Maryland Senator Barbara Mikulski was one of the Democrats crowing about the women's preventative care part of the president's health care law, which goes into effect tomorrow. We fought for a preventive health care amendment that not only passed, but goes into effect tomorrow on August 1st, and it will be a new day for women of all ages. 47 million women are in health plans that must offer eight health preventative benefits to women for free. Meanwhile, a report by Republican congressional investigators finds that five ATF officials are responsible for the botched fast and furious gun tracking operation. And spoiler alert, at the Olympic pool, Michael Phelps has taken the silver medal in the 200 meter butterfly swim. Meanwhile, on the gym floor, US women gymnasts got the gold for the first time since 1996. This is NBC News. The evidence is growing that home prices are climbing out of the ditch they hit last winter when they bottomed out. 
Vice President of the S&P Indices, Maureen Maitland, says home prices rose in May, but it's not quite enough to convince her. Ever since the downturn, we've had like a, a bumpy ride where we saw some momentum three times in a row. The first time was with the, was with the home buyer's tax credit, the next time was last spring, and then now we're seeing it again. So we've kind of had this bumpy sideways move, movement, and we're, we really need to wait a few more months to see if we're going to, if we've truly turned around or not. You know, two months of data is just not enough. And the murder trial of former Illinois police officer Sir Drew Peterson is underway. The 58-year-old is accused of killing his third wife in 2004. His fourth wife vanished in 2007. He is suspected but not charged in that disappearance. And there's an app for Mitt's VP. Mitt Romney's campaign announced an app to alert supporters when the Republican makes his vice presidential pick. I'm Luke Russert, NBC News Radio. There are few things in life as debilitating as a severe headache. Whether it's caused from stress, anxiety, depression, or too much to drink, there is a remedy. How would you like to get rid of a headache before it happens? Migralex is the answer. Migralex will not only get rid of your headache, it will help prevent headaches from the start. I'm Dr. Mauskop. I have been studying headaches as a neurologist for 25 years, and I know the effects they can have on the person. I have developed Migralex to free people from the pain and keep them from getting headaches. Migralex worked so fast, I almost forgot. I even had a headache. I never thought anything could save me from getting bad headaches. With my Gorlex, I'm headache free. I know my Gorlex will free you from headache pain, and I guarantee it. Call 800 507 6836 to learn how you can get a free bottle and see how it can work for you. That's 800 507 6836. Stop suffering with headaches today. Act now. Call 800-507-6836 or go to migralex.com. That's M I G R A L E X.com. Hi, I'm Jay Farner from Quicken Loans. Today's interest rates are the lowest that we've seen in generations. The rate today on a 30-year fixed mortgage is an amazing 3.5%, APR 3.81%. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. We'll help you keep more of that hard-earned money in your pocket where it belongs. Maybe that's why for the second year in a row now, J.D. Power & Associates rank Quicken Loans highest in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination in the nation. Here are some of the reasons why. We close many of our loans in 30 days or less, and we provide you with industry-leading online apps designed to guide you through the loan process with speed and ease. Again, today's amazingly low rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage is 3.5%, APR 3.81%. So give us a call today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. Or visit us at quickenloans.com and find out for yourself why we're engineered to amaze. For J.D. Power & Associates award information, visit jdpower.com. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hey, this is Nia the Computer Girl from PC Laptops. It's our ultra mega super deluxe blowout sale on the best desktop and laptop computers on the planet. We have demo models, open box, scratch and dents, and new models up to 50% off the original prices. Isn't that sweet? Do you have an old clunky computer? No problem, we'll buy it from you. And apply it to your new computer. We'll transfer all of your pictures and stuff for free with our exclusive lifetime service guarantee. That means if you get a virus or spyware, or if your Windows gets completely messed up, you're covered 100%. To make it extra sweet, we're doing zero down, zero interest for a whole year. OAC. Holy mackerel, did I just say that? Please visit any one of our locations right now. Or call us right now at 1-877-596-SAVE. That's 1-877-596-SAVE. Or check us out at PCLaptops.com. Because at PC Laptops, we love you. Politicians may try to convince you that they can create jobs, but the cold fact is that politicians don't create jobs. Entrepreneurs do. Are you barely surviving in this economy but want to learn how to thrive in this economy? Are you tired of the rat race and burn with the desire to be your own boss? We've all heard the parable that if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. But if you teach that man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. Are you ready to learn how to fish? Join proven entrepreneur, best-selling author, and host of Mental Self-Defense Radio, Jake Shannon, at the upcoming weekend bootstrap entrepreneurship training right here in Salt Lake City. This Bootstrap Entrepreneurship Boot Camp is strictly limited to only 15 participants and is offered on a first-come, first-serve basis. Learn more now at www.entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. That's entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. Entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. Dude, come on. Love it. 
Oh, my God. Exposing politics as pro wrestling. Welcome to Mental Self Defense Radio and the Jake Shannon Radio Program. Now, here's your host, Jake Shannon. Five to one, baby. One and five. No one here gets out alive now. You get yours, baby. I'll get mine. Gonna make it, baby, if we try. All right, here we are. It is a Tuesday uh, past the 2 o'clock hour. Uh, in about 20 minutes or so, we will have uh, our regular contributor, Connor Boyack, uh, chiming in. I think he's talking about the education bubble. Uh, I wanted to make a few notes before we get back to uh, this thing that is just grating on my nerves. And that is this, this the narrative behind this Batman shooting. Uh, but first, I want to make a couple uh, notes First, I want you to uh, remember to call your uh, your senators. The Cybersecurity Act of 2012, which is uh, Senate Bill 3414, is a bunch of crap, and call them. Even if it's Hatch, harass, tell, well, be kind, be polite, but make your point known. You're a grown human being. You don't need this nonsense. Tell them to vote no, or you're going to vote them out. Vote no, or I'm voting you out on this uh, Senate Bill 3414, the Cybersecurity Act, okay? You can go to Senate.gov, simple enough. Look them up, Senate.gov. The bill is 3414, it's called the Cybersecurity Act. Say, hi, my name is so-and-so. Wanna let you know, you need to vote no on this or I'm voting you out. Yes, you, Orrin Hatch, is who I'm particularly talking uh, about also wanted to wish uh, re- may he rest in peace a happy birthday to Mil- also wanted to wish uh, re- may he rest in peace a happy birthday to Milton Friedman huge towering advocate of liberty in the 20th century until 2006 when he passed Milton Friedman was not perfect, but then again, none of us are. But on net, his contributions to human liberty so far outstrip his problems, the things that maybe the mistakes he made or the wrong worldviews. Uh, a really an incredible man. I, you know, Nobel laureate, uh, famous leader of the Monetarist School of Economics, Chicago School. Huge advocate for liberty. I would highly suggest if you're new to liberty and you're kind of, you know, a Mises Institute person that's as far as you've waded in, they've got tons of great stuff at Mises. You need to push yourself a little bit, okay? There's a ton. Uh, the, the libertarian tradition is so rich and so full of different thinkers from not only the Austrian school, not only um, the monetarist school. You've got public choice economics, which has a very libertarian flavor to it. You have uh, other theorists. All kinds of guys going back in history. I mean, you have Georgist uh, geo-libertarianism. And I would certainly recommend you look into Milton Friedman. Again, not perfect. Guess what? Neither was Rothbard, neither is Ron Paul, neither am I, neither are you. But this guy was huge, towering. Now, I was very fortunate. I met him in the late 90s uh, while I was going to grad school and slightly before I went to grad school. I was working at a place called Laissez-Faire Books. This is before um, Amazon came and killed every bookstore uh, across the world. <laughs> and uh, Laissez-Faire Books was a specialist libertarian bookstore. And they didn't direct mail, so they sent out, they had like a huge list of libertarians across the world, and they sent out like a, a mailer every month. And it was great. It had little, you know, little essays in it, and then all the new books that different libertarians from, from Thomas Sowell to... Milton Friedman, to Rothbard, to Mises, to Menger, to Hayek, to Kersner. Really, really great. And it was great working there. I mean, really, that was like, for me, working in those stacks for those couple years, uh, really exposed me to so many different ideas across the board. Uh, and, and Milton Friedman, for whatever reason, I can't remember, I think we had a bunch of copies of his books and he was going to do a book signing or something. So. Uh, my boss at the time, realizing that I was a huge nerd for 
uh, libertarianism and, and especially Milton Friedman. Uh, he lived in San Francisco, which is where Laissez-Faire Books was headquartered. I was the manager of the shipping department there in the late 90s. And she sent myself and, and my friend Russ. We went over, were able to go to uh, Milton Friedman's penthouse apartment in uh, downtown San Francisco. Really amazing. Went up the elevator, was shocked at what tiny little people they were. Like, really small people, both Mil uh, Milton and his wife, Rose. Quite a smart woman in her own right. And was able to, you know, I mean, it wasn't anything fancy, but I was able to shake hands with him, meet him, that kind of thing. It was, it was pretty fun. I think that same year, or within the span of like 18 months, I met Milton Friedman, James Buchanan, who's another Nobel uh, laureate, uh, him, the leader of the Public Choice School of Economics, him and Gordon Tullock. Uh, and then I also met, uh, I think it was uh, Becker. Gary Becker, another very famous uh, economist and Nobel Prize winner, did that. It was really a fun, fun uh, time. Now, getting back to the LIBOR scandal, and again, I did several, several shows on the LIBOR scandal. Please go back to the archives, get caught up. Um, I maybe after the after Connor's segment at the top of the three o'clock hour, I'll do a review. I'll do a bit of a a summary of what's going on, what's the problem, why it's so scandalous. But what I find interesting, and again, I'm I'm seeking confirmation. If maybe you know something or you found an article, I did a bit of research. I spent probably about twenty minutes trying to find this one thing last night. I couldn't find it. The number here, 801-254-5855. Please uh, feel free to call in. Normal caveats apply. If the line is busy, call right back. If the phone is ringing, hang in there. I do want to get you on. I do. I want you on the air. Now, to me about this, though, is that... So Robert Holmes was a senior lead scientist at FICO, Fair Isaac Corporation. Okay. Which, by the way, incidentally, I had an interview with them. They didn't hire me, but this was back while I was in grad school before I graduated. Anyway, uh, FICO, Robert Holmes was the lead. And they were out, if I remember right, where I interviewed, it was somewhere like in Sonoma County or somewhere up uh, in the Bay Area, but it wasn't East Bay. It was up more like in the wine country. It was weird. It was quite a drive. But anyway, Robert Holmes, the father of James Holmes, this person who is who allegedly committed all these, <clears throat> this mass shooting. He's a senior lead scientist with FICO. Now FICO score is your credit score. And, score. and he, from what I understand, and this is where I'm trying to find, and now I've been to his LinkedIn page, which lists all of his accomplishments, his work for DARPA, uh, that kind of thing. But what I'm interested in is this, this notion going around the internet that um, he was scheduled to testify in, very shortly, in the next few weeks, uh, before a U.S. Senate panel that's investigating this LIBOR fraud. And he, if you go to his, um, his LinkedIn page, which is basically where his resume is, LinkedIn.com, I'm on there. Uh, you know, you should be on there. Everybody's on there. It's like a Facebook for resumes. Well, Robert Holmes is there. And not only does it list his um, his bona fides with DARPA, this advanced research kind of secretive arm of the defense uh, department, <clears throat> but it also shows that he was not only the lead, a, a senior lead scientist for FICO doing credit scoring, but he worked on algorithms for fraud. Now, I'm trying to find some smoking gun evidence that he was actually going to be an expert witness in this test. Very interesting. I told you that this LIBOR scandal is so huge that there would be some sort of distraction. It, it really stinks to high heaven. But I, I'm, I'm trying to find 
the smoking gun. Not just allegations. I don't want any insinuations. I don't want the more uh, kind of wacky conspiracy sites. I, I'm not interested in that. I need some sort of confirmation. If you have it, I couldn't find it. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm asking you. 801 254 5855. Trying to find that. We've got uh, a caller. And again, the number 801 254 5855. If the line is busy, please, we'll get to you. But if the line's ringing, hang in. You're probably next. Uh, let's go to Ed in West Valley City. Ed, are you there? Yeah, Jake. Hey, Ed, what's going on? Well, uh, not too much, but uh, very interesting sleuthing you've done here. You caught my attention. Uh, there were those of us that did a lot of research on the uh, first Columbine. And uh, this is Columbine 2, what happened here recently, uh, Jake, in my view. But um, MK Ultra, the mind control program experiments by the CIA that Jimmy Carter, to his credit, helped expose. Yeah, with the uh, church committee. I did a whole, yes. yesterday's show was all about the connections between the mind control, DARPA, mm -hmm. uh, and some of the just weird anomalies that seem to be popping up about the, the narrative that they're trying to push on us. Well, exactly. And when you look at things like uh, Jim Morrison of the Doors. Right, we talked about this. Yeah. His father uh, was uh, the lead admiral that got us into the Vietnam War. Exactly. And so uh, this is too much to be coincidence. And I think you've hit maybe not the smoking gun with his father-son connection in Holmes, but uh, it definitely leads to somewhere. And uh, Well, this, the thing that's interesting to me is I, I, you have to give it to, I don't know what you want to call them, the bad guys, or if this is actually an orchestrated false flag, you have to give it to them. They're smart. They, they know what they're doing because with one family, they nailed a bunch of stuff. They, they distracted us from LIBOR and might potentially get some support for this uh, UN gun ban treaty. All in one fell swoop with well, one family. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if they're getting much support on the gun ban. Um, thankfully, the American people uh, are resolute against that. Yeah. Although, like you say, they can make inroads, and uh, they do that. They try to kill two birds with one stone always. They get as much as they can, like they did out of 9-11. Uh, they got a lot of goodies there with 9-11. Now, now, let me ask you something, Ed. Have you heard anything about this? Because I want to find well, the actual, like, an invitation for him to be an expert witness to to testify about this LIBOR scandal, because if that comes through, I'm done. I know this is a rigged deal. Okay, all I have is this. Um, no, I don't have anything on that, so I'm waiting for Victor Thorne to write. Uh, I don't know that he's going to, but that's his forte at the American Free Press newspaper, okay. which uh, Tim uh, gets, and uh, he's subscribed to, as I do, have for many years. But Victor Thorne seems to be the resident writer there. You may want to even Google him in. I'm going to do it shortly uh, before, because they go to writing, and usually things are backed up 10, 10 days to yeah. two weeks from the incident. Yeah. However, Lynn Fenton, I do know this, Dr. Lynn Fenton was tied in with both DARPA, uh, CIA at one time, but uh, most of her career was Air Force Intelligence. Now, the Air Force Intelligence... Wait, so who's Lynn Fenton? Dr. Lynn Fenton was the doctor psychiatrist in care of James ah, Holmes. Ah, okay. So uh, there is something for you on that. And like I say, this is a fairly new thing, but I call it Columbine 2 because if you look at Columbine 1... Uh, Jake, uh, the, those kids, there were more than guns involved. They had the canisters in there. You had uh, the SWAT team that uh, 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 did a gauntlet around the school afterwards so parents couldn't go and fetch your children. Right. And uh, they let those bodies be in there for up to 24 hours, including the, the famous uh, heroic uh, uh, gym teacher. And uh, it just goes on and on. You had uh, Deputy Stone. Uh, that was under investigation by some people uh, for this whole thing. You had Al Gore. Something, something fishy. Now, Ed, we're running out of time. Okay. We've got our, our commercial. They just come and go as they please. Yeah. Um, if you find anything... I'll get back to yeah, you. Yeah, just call me right back because this is, to me, that is... I'm done at that point. At that point, when I find that there's witness testimony for him to... To, to testify against this, right. I like One last thing, uh, Jake, uh, yep. go to rents.com, R E N S E.com. He's usually on to this, so I'm waiting for something to break there. All right, buddy, appreciate it. All right, guys, come on back. Mental Self Defense Radio, K Talk, the voice of Utah. Come on back. Are you ready for some fun? It's time to get out and play. Grab your kids, grandkids, and the kid in you. Experience the fun of radio-controlled cars, trucks, boats, and helicopters. Visit www.primehobbies.com, your online hobby store. We only stock name brand products. Traxxas radio-controlled cars and trucks, HPI Racing, Align Helicopters, 
Team Associated, and Quest Aerospace. If you're tired of buying and buying and buying the discount store junk, stop by PrimeHobbies.com and purchase a vehicle that will last for years with parts support to keep you up and running. Let Prime Hobbies be your number one trusted online hobby superstore. For fun delivered right to your door, go to PrimeHobbies.com. That's www.primehobbies.com. Let the fun begin. www.primehobbies.com. Are you feeling weighed down by clutter? Let Town Storage help you lighten up. Using a storage unit is a great way to organize your home so you can experience clutter-free living. If you're trying to sell your home or having family over for the holidays, a storage unit can really help open up your house for a quick sell or to make room for all the relatives. Town Storage has new lower prices and an on-site manager. You have 24-hour management, security, video surveillance. Town Storage is great. It's right off the freeway. There's an electronic gate. The driveways are nice and wide, so you're not having to squeeze your truck in. In fact, they can accommodate a whole 53-foot tractor trailer. They're open seven days a week, and they even have business discounts. Wherever you live in Utah, there's a Town Storage near you. Visit townstorage.com, that's town with an E, storage.com, or call 800-716-8917. That's 1-800-716-8917. You're over 40, having trouble reading street signs, driving is getting scary, and reading isn't fun anymore. Sound familiar? Yeah, well, that's the curse of cataracts. I know, I went through it. Then I went to the Eye Institute of Utah, and in a matter of minutes, the problem was solved. No pain, no discomfort. And by that evening, I had the vision I'd enjoyed as a teenager. Years ago, cataract surgery was a huge deal. Now, thanks to modern LensX laser technology, the whole procedure's over in a matter of minutes with no pain or discomfort, and Medicare pays most of the cost. Don't trust your vision to just anyone. You want the very best, and for me, that was Dr. Sioni and the other highly trained specialists at the Eye Institute of Utah. They've done thousands of successful procedures and they're so advanced that other doctors come from all over the world to study under their guidance. Call now for a free evaluation, 801-803-6968. That's 801-803-6968. Call 801-803-6968 now for a free evaluation. The Voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live, local, two-way talk. Ricky, don't lose that number. You don't want to call nobody else. Send it off in a letter to yourself. All right, guys, here we are. Welcome back. Mental Self-Defense Radio. I am your host, Jake Shannon. You can check us out. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Find me there. I've got actually two pages. One is like my personal page, but you can add me there. I think I got room. I think I have like something like 3,000 people on it or something. Still got plenty of room. Uh, then I actually have my other page, which I just post more kind of random things. Um, less personal, but more about the news and whatnot. And that you find that too. I think it says mental self-defense right on the logo. Uh, what else do I got on Facebook? I got the Endonomics <clears throat> page, which... Just me posting the news items relating to the collapse, the impending collapse of the empire, the United States as we know it. I think I started that like two months ago, and I've already got 500 followers. So imagine when the book actually comes out and I start putting some oomph behind it. <clears throat> got my Teal Cond page. I know we've got like 1,200 followers on that one already for my book, Teal Cond, talking about the infiltration of the neoconservatives into the liberty movement how that happened it was actually the first book on the tea party to be published did you know that the modern tea party of course so you can check all those out obviously uh, check out the ktalk website k-talk.com go to show archives uh, click on that find my name click on that you can scroll around find any of the shows we've had incredible guests incredible guests Really, I, 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 I will put the quality of our guests on this show up against not only any other person in Utah, any other show in Utah, but in the country. I'll do it. 
We've had incredible guests. Go check them out. And I designed this not to necessarily be talk radio. I, I designed this almost like as if it's almost like I, I want more of a university environment where we I push you and I challenge you and I'm going to expose you to stuff you've never heard of before. That's my challenge here. Now, as you guys get used to me, maybe you'll hear some familiar themes emerging. Financial engineering, social engineering, iatrogenesis. endonomics <laughs> but I do pride myself on the caliber of the guests that we've had the quality of the conversations that we have here and pushing the boundaries a bit pushing you outside of your comfort zone outside of what the mainstream media wants to spoon feed you like a little baby now I am curious if you know anything about this, Robert Holmes and his this date that he was somehow set to testify with regards to this LIBOR scandal, I would love if you could send me some sort of document that is, and again, Ed mentioned rents. Look, rents is cool, but sometimes they're a little flimsy on facts. Uh, I'm not so much into the speculating as I am data points and then later connecting the data points. Data points being facts. That is interesting that uh, the point Ed brought up about uh, James Holmes's psychiatrist and her background. Certainly adding more to the sketchiness of the narrative that is, again, lone wolf nonsense. And yesterday we explored a bit the data points surrounding other situations like this, like Sirhan Sirhan with the Robert Kennedy assassination, like... John Hinckley Jr. and his connections to the Bush family, who is the most immediate to benefit, had the Reagan assassination gone as planned. Data points. Sometimes that's all we have. But this is the point I try to make. This is the point I made in my the first real book that I really got behind and really put some oomph into. I'd published some other small rinky-dink self-published things, uh, mostly actually in wrestling because I just wanted to get some information out for those that were interested. But my first real kind of epistemological, my philosophical uh, book that I wrote in 2009 called Anomaly, Revolutionary Knowledge in Everyday Life, the point that I wanted to make to beat you over the head with is this difference between type 1 and type 2 errors. They are both important now that's an inductive reasoning but you also have it in deductive reasoning it's called affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent okay my point is is this false positives and false negatives you know what a false positive is that's when you take a pregnancy test it says you're pregnant and then later you find out we're not pregnant or oh we're not pregnant But nobody really pays attention to false negatives. That's the scary stuff. Imagine you're in the jungle and you hear a rustle in the leaves. A type one error would be, oh, I hear a rustle in the leaves and man, maybe there's a tiger and I should prepare myself. And you go check and there's no tiger. A false positive signal. Well, what's real dangerous is the false negative, which is you hear the rustle in the leaves and you go, oh, it's nothing. And there is a tiger and he eats you dead. These false negatives are just as important. Now we have to be able to sift through them because sometimes you'll get data points like the man in the moon. There's not actually a man in the moon. It's called apophenia. When you see something out of data that's not there, you make something. This is what schizophrenics do. But there's a concept in inductive reasoning, in statistics, known as, quote, statistical power, end quote. And that's testing the type 2 errors. Because all the basis of reasoning is inductive. And you've got to avoid both. Not just the type 1 error, type 2 errors. All right, so it is a 2.30 Tuesday. Tuesday after 2.30 means it's time for the Boyack Review. 
We've got Connor on the phone. Let me see if I can use my muscle, get this button pushed. Connor, are you there? I am, Jake. How are you doing? I'm doing super duper. So, uh, so today you wanted to talk about the education bubble. Yeah. So yeah, what about well, it? No well, big deal. Of, Who cares? Whatever. One of, one of many bubbles that we have to... Why should we care about the education bubble? Well, you Who know, cares? most people are... <laughs> I know. I'm, pe- I'm playing too, devil's advocate. Too few people. That's, that's your answer. The, this is one of the upcoming bubble, or rather the bubbles we're in, one of the upcoming bursts that we're going to deal with. We've got the, the sovereign debt and the dollar and the credit and everything going on. But the education bubble is one that has not as, as significant short-term implications as something like the mortgage bubble, but it has significant long-term implications because it deals with things like education, these, these fundamentally important services uh, that people, you know, hope to be able to obtain. The, the education bubbles, much, it's patterned much after previous bubbles, specifically just to use it because it's so recent, the housing bubble, where intervention by the government inflates prices, misallocates resources, provides loans and guarantees to people who the market w- would not give them to. You know, these people would not qualify for them without the government's guarantees. Um, and that jeopardizes the entire system. People aren't able to pay back their loans. The entire thing collapses under its own weight, and then there's significant implications throughout other markets and throughout the, the specific market that you're talking to. The well, same it's not thing. insignificant. I mean, I know that the, the in the United States alone, it's over a trillion dollars. We just eked over a trillion dollars. in Correct, debt. yeah. So, so it is a lot only. of money. But at least compared to mortgages, uh, it's, it's something like, I think, 10% of what... Well, uh, and the other thing is, is the, the, finan- the student loans, you're forced... To, I mean, you can't declare bankruptcy on them, where you can on a, on a home loan. Right, and, and there's other differences. For example, it's not as easy to speculate and, and repackage and buy you know, education debt, whereas you can flip homes. It's a, you can't flip a brain. I mean, it's, it's harder for the speculation to enter. And so there are differences, but the patterns are quite similar, if not exactly the same in terms of the government intervention, the, the quote, unintended consequences, and the end result of what happens. And, and this, of course, is, is a bit more familiar to many people if they pay attention at all to what Congress has been doing, because it was just about a month ago, a little less than a month ago, Congress took up a bill that passed overwhelmingly after much, you know, partisan rancor to extend by one year a 2007 law which lowered the subsidized Stafford loan interest rate. So the interest rate at which students are getting, generally getting their student loans, something like 75% of all education, college, university loans are going through the federal government, much like Fannie and Freddie now own something over 90% of all mortgages. The, the federal government now backs and funds 75% or more of all these education loans. So this law was going to expire. It was going to double the interest rate from its current 3.4% to 6.8. And so, of course, everyone's freaking out. That would pile on about $1,000 average per student who's taking these loans out. Clearly, these politicians can't have that because then their constituents would be upset that they're not getting cheaper you know, access to cheaper capital. And so they passed a one-year extension to this law, uh, 2007 law, that keeps that interest rate artificially lower, which is, has an expense of about $6 billion just for the next year in terms of artificially setting that interest rate a little bit, or you know, about half of what it would normally be. So, so this is something that's definitely a current event. They've kicked the can, really, is all that's happened. And that doesn't necessarily mean that nothing will happen between now and then where the market starts responding and rejecting what's going on. In fact, uh, just a couple days ago, there was a two-year investigation that was uh, concluded and released by Senator Tom Harkin. He's a Democrat from, I think, Iowa. Um, He's a a chairman of the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. So it was just a couple days ago they released this two-year study that said that, for, for example, I think the, the study had to do specifically with uh, for-profit universities. But education in general that, uh, is getting $32 billion in federal student aid just for these for-profit colleges. And so the, the angle here is, well, these you know, non-profit universities, community colleges are better because they're cheaper. Th- this is an interesting point because here in Utah, we have many of these, like Steven Henniger is one that comes to mind, uh, these, these for-profit universities. They're getting a lot of money from 
the federal government. They have very high prices. They have a dropout rate, a, a default rate, I should say, uh, of more than three times those of, of private nonprofits and, and public universities. So the, the dynamics here are quite different. Yeah, and it's, it's these, these uh, they're, they're opportunists, and they come in and they do this arbitrage based on these price fixings, which and, is and that's the interest a good, rate. Yeah, that's a very important distinction that you bring up because the discussion I have with some people as well, these are private universities, this shows that we need the government involved, these, these public universities can provide it for cheaper, and you know, the graduation rate's better, the default rate's lower. Well, of course, you have to, you have to peel back the layers of the onion, right, and say, well, why is it cheaper? It's cheaper because they're forcing taxpayers to subsidize the education of these students, and so they're able to offer it at, at lower rates than a private university that can't run up the Federal Reserve printing press or force, forcibly tax people to help subsidize it. And also, you have uh, a misdirection of market uh, signals. So for example, whereas a, a truly independently free market university would offer an improved product, improved service for, or improved quality for lower costs, you don't have these private for-profit universities responding to the same market signals. They know that this, this education capital from the government is quite easy to obtain. They can then correspondingly increase their rates, line their own pockets, increase their salaries, and they don't have the same incentive to respond to increase the quality of their service because who's going to these universities? Quite often it's students who couldn't get in to the you know, public universities, the community colleges in some cases. These are people who maybe have different schedules. They want to do night universities because they work. It, it's kind of this captive situation where these universities, as you say, are opportunists. They're taking advantage of people who can't, uh, whether because of schedule or admission guidelines, get into these other universities that are heavily subsidized by the taxpayer. Well, but and th this is a point that uh, Tyler Cowen makes in, in, in a really great book called, um, um, uh, what is it? It's like uh, the Austrian Theory of the Business Cycle and Risk. I can't remember the name of the book. Anyway, the point is, is by artificially keeping these rates low by this price fixing, people take risks. They add risk into the market that they normally would not be happening with these poor Stephen Henniger types where they're like, oh man, I really have no risk because the interest rates are so low. Let me take out these crazy loans. And then they get in and they would normally not have taken those risks, probably right. had the proper price signals, the interest rates, been what they need to be factored in for risk. And, and we see that manifest itself in many ways. So for example, tuition and fees for, for colleges and universities have risen over the past three decades more than 440 percent right because this federal money is available they can do it they can in hire more people and increase their own salaries they don't have to respond as much because the market signals aren't there between the consumer and the producer uh, they can get away with doing a lot less and charging a lot more and so they have we see this right now we see uh, quality declining there's been all sorts of studies showing that the cognitive abilities of people graduating from universities are not significantly higher by any standard uh, as when they enter college. They're going to get a degree, they're going to obtain a social status and receive the certificate of completion that tells a prospective employer that somehow, you know, they took some classes and got good grades and that's about all. And so it's become more of a social signal. I think what we find here, and we'll probably have to talk more about it after the break, is the disruptions that we see in the education market. The, the changes that people in the uh, in the private sector are doing on their own to really challenge that. You've got your Peter Thiels and your Khan Academies and all these people who, even despite the current system that they have, are saying either walk away from it, don't use it, let's do something radically different. And that's creating, from my vantage point on the sidelines, tidal waves through the ed, you know, uh, educational sector because people are now finding ways uh, to refuse to pound you know, themselves, bury themselves in debt for a piece of paper that ultimately isn't worth a lot. Yeah, I mean, it still doesn't get you a job after you graduated despite all the promises. All right, guys, come on back. Middle of the Boyack Review right here on Mental Self-Defense Radio. K-Talk, the voice of Utah. Come on back. Politicians may try to convince you that they can create jobs, but the cold fact is that politicians don't create jobs, entrepreneurs do. Are you barely surviving in this economy, but want to learn how to thrive in this economy? Are you tired of the rat race and burn with the desire to be your own boss? We've all heard the parable that if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. 
But if you teach that man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. Are you ready to learn how to fish? Join proven entrepreneur, best-selling author, and host of Mental Self-Defense Radio, Jake Shannon, at the upcoming weekend bootstrap entrepreneurship training right here in Salt Lake City. This Bootstrap Entrepreneurship Boot Camp is strictly limited to only 15 participants and is offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Learn more now at www.entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. That's entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. Entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. If you have been diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea and are wearing a CPAP mask, are you among the 75% of CPAP users who cannot tolerate it? Does it make you feel strapped down, interrupt your sleep, causing tooth-related problems? Does it make you feel claustrophobic and you unconsciously remove it during the night? Call Dr. Miles Preble for a comfortable alternate treatment at 801-278-4787. That's 801-278-4787 or online at smileutah.com. Gung Ho increases memory storage and recall. Gung Ho, when taken at suggested doses, will improve memory, storage, and recall. Gung Ho could be called a brain nutrient because it increases levels of several important neurotransmitters. Improve your memory. Go to k-talk.com and click on Gung Ho. Eat, like, focus. The Voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. Hello, it's me. All right, guys, welcome back. Mental Self-Defense Radio. Still uh, shaking off the ring rust after being gone for two weeks. Again, thanks to the fill-in hosts, um, Kenny and Sean from Lunatic Fringe Podcast. Also, uh, the wonderful Scott Lindsley. Uh, we've got with us now Connor Boyack. Connor, are you still there? I am. So we're talking about the education bubble. Yeah, and, and it's important before continuing, perhaps revisiting a little bit what we talked about before, recognizing the bubble for what it is. There, there are certain uh, signals that can be observed by anyone to understand if we're in the bubble, one of which really is that everyone wants in. Everyone thinks that, that there's it's a security blanket, if you will, that... It's never going to devalue. Everyone perceives it as being important. Everyone wants to keep obtaining it despite any perceived uh, decrease in quality and increase in cost. Uh, you see it when you're substantially indebting yourself to obtain it. Rather than paying cash or, or what have you to be able to obtain this good or service, you recognize it as being so important, like a house, for example, that you place yourself under debt for 30 years or 15 years for a house or that you take on these massive student loans uh, to obtain this service. Um, for example, many of these loans, another uh, indication that uh, you're in a bubble is that many of these loans are made without even looking into whether the borrowers are fit to pay the loans back. There are government guarantees, measures that are introduced to uh, basically offer anyone that wants to go to school money, subsidies, grants, uh, loans. This is another indicator, both with housing. We saw it with subprime, for example. We see it in education as well, subprime, you know, academia, if you want to call it that. The people who wouldn't qualify either for admission uh, to a certain university and then they go to a, like a for-profit who will accept anyone with money, or people who are getting loans who clearly, you know, have a, a weak financial status and, and uh, prospective ability to pay that loan back. These are all indications that we saw in the housing market. We see them all in the education uh, market as well. It's important, I think, to recognize those to, first of all, you know, agree upon the simple fact that we are in a bubble and something needs to be done about it. Those who recognize the housing bubble f for what it was can, sure, if you want to kind of be the capitalist, you can make a profit, you can kind of play the game and do that. But for those who are themselves having to live within that bubble, uh, in the housing bubble, if you want to obtain a home, if you have a home and want to pay down the debt or, or do things, Understanding the bubble for what it is allows you to make more informed decisions. We see the same thing with education. So, for example, uh, Peter Thiel, right, a few months, maybe about a year ago, uh, he started offering people, I think he did about a couple dozen people. Uh, for those who don't know, Peter Thiel is, a, is the founder of PayPal, uh, an early investor in Facebook, very wealthy and libertarian individual. Um, he went so far as to question all of higher education. I love this. This is a quote from TechCrunch about a... a an article about education. So this is Peter Thiel. He says, 
A true bubble is when something is overvalued and intensely believed. Education may be the only thing people still believe in in the United States. To question education is really dangerous. It's the absolute taboo. It's like telling the world no Santa Claus. And, of course, he's, he's speaking about this because he did his program that many people are familiar with where he was offering people to, uh, like $100,000 to drop out of college and start a business. Right, saying, right. Let's, let's circumvent this uh, you know, entirely. And people might say, well, it's going to take you know, thousands of people doing that, not just who doesn't. But what I think is so important about what Peter was doing is that, as we said before the break, or as I was arguing, that if the college degree, if a university diploma is really just a social status symbol, if it's just a, a ranking in society that you're part of this you know, educated elite or this, this cadre of you know, people who've been well-schooled, then it's important that we go after that from a social standpoint. Not that we have a critical mass and thousands or millions of people who are rejecting the system, but that we start to change the way that society sees that status symbol that we start to encourage people to recognize that simply having a degree from a four-year university really doesn't mean a lot. The study I, I found that I was uh, thinking about before was, in fact, I had it pulled up right here. Oh, I might have to find it a little bit later. They, um, let's see, I had it pulled up and then I lost it. Well, anyways, the, they were uh, finding that the critical thinking of people who simply went through a two-year associate's degree was no greater than when it was, was uh, on average when people entered school. So we, people aren't learning anything. We once thought of, and, and perhaps universities were once a place where people could significantly excel in their educational capacities and come out that much smarter and well-trained and capable and productive. Really, schools, universities have kind of degraded. And clearly, this is just a generality. People can still learn and excel, and especially if they apply themselves but the inertia in the system and, and the many uh, misdirections that the market forces that are no longer applying to these institutions would otherwise have produced has resulted in a system that we're just churn it's a diploma mill really is what it's become. And so I, what Peter Thiel is doing I think is important because it changes the, the perception of that social status symbol. We see it with many other disruptions. And I think it was a different TechCrunch article, Clayton Christensen, uh, who is, is a author of several books, very well-known Harvard professor for talking about market disruptions and innovation. He said this. He said uh, he's, he's talking about what might happen in the future of education to kind of change the way things are done. He says, I bet that what, what happens as higher education becomes more modular is that accreditation occurs at the level of the course and not the university. So what he's talking about is more an a la carte education where rather than simply getting a four-year degree, you go to become an apprentice effectively. You pick your career, you pick your, your job path, and sure, there are prerequisites, but you can, uh, you can focus in on the specific courses that you want to take. Rather than having it be a general four-year package that you have to get, take all these irrelevant classes, things that don't have anything to do with what you are like, you don't do well on them, it lowers your GPA, education becomes more modular and you can pick and choose what you want to do um, rather than being forced to kind of have this general four-year degree. So, so to the extent that we start seeing universities doing that as well, I think we're going to see uh, quality improving and, and prices decreasing as well for people going through. We see it with uh, the Khan Academy. If, if people aren't familiar with it, it's this revolutionary service, K-H-A-N, Khan Academy. Uh, you can find it online, and it's just this massive library of video on demand for all different types of uh, courses and material. You can do it for free at your own pace. You can go learn. We see the same thing with iTunes U, with the Mises Academy, with Tom Woods Liberty Classroom. I, I think the future, really, we're seeing a lot of disruption in education. People recognize the bubble for what it is, and they're providing people who recognize that, too, a way to get out, to still obtain an education, to still become smart, but to the extent that people think that they need this to get a job, as you mentioned before the break, that's not happening. We have massive malemployment and unemployment right now, even people coming out of college laden with debt. I have you know, several lawyers in the family, no many others who go to law school, and they just have tens of thousands of dollars of debt, and then they're unemployed, and they're doing something just to pay the bills that's completely unrelated to all the schooling they went. We see this with many other industries. So I think the education bubble is, is bursting, if not will soon burst. The question is for those who are going through school themselves right now, uh, who are, are thinking about it, recognizing the fact that that bubble exists, and then making a better informed decision of do I want this much debt? Is this four-year university really going to help me to get a job or a, a quality job that will help me pay down that debt? 
Uh, people need to get a lot smarter, and I think, as Peter Thiel was doing, we need to find ways to encourage people to recognize that simply having a, a diploma really is meaningless. I know plenty of people who went through college with me who, you know, I wouldn't hire myself if I were a business right. owner. They just memorized their stuff and took tests and, and played the game pretty well. Uh, but, but we need to change society's perception of what a diploma is, whether it's something extravagant like Peter Meal and uh, Thiel and his millions, or something smaller that we can do, some type of activist project. That is the perception I think that we need to change, and then the whole thing kind of comes crumbling down around it. Yeah, there's uh, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, you know, over at my mental self defense dot com site, I've had listed there uh, not only things like you know the Khan Academy, Mises, all these free resources. I mean, MIT has an entire free uh, series of courses that you can take online. Um, a, a bunch of these universities are beginning to switch to this this kind of model, and there's actually a bit of uh, talk. Also, one of my favorite libertarian economists, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, Brian Kaplan over at George Mason University, uh, he has a real great blog, the Econ Lib uh, blog, and there's kind of been a debate going on over there about that really, and it is to this point that we're noticing kind of uh, a paradigm shift again. I'm sorry to use such an overused phrase, but with the internet, it almost makes this kind of old school method of learning obsolete. And, and the right. point that Kaplan is making is that modern education is experiencing a kind of a signaling failure because it used to signal that if you had an advanced degree that you had you know those those uh, qualities sure that uh, make you a good uh, employee that that uh, you're smart you're hardworking that you're a conformist well and 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 that's not the the case anymore education doesn't signal that. And you make a point that the people that you went to school with, would you actually hire them? Right. And I love well, and what think, Teal's doing uh, because I think entrepreneurship is the real way to learn anything. You throw yourself into it. Right. Think of it this way, though, right? Do you – you need surgery. Do you want a doctor? Are you going to feel immediately re- reassured because your doctor has a diploma hanging on his wall? And, of course, many people do, and that's the perception we need to change. Or do you feel more reassured when you were referred to that doctor by some a friend who had a similar surgery? Yeah, and, right? and had a great experience. And a great experience. Do you want competency or do you want just, you know, I went through a course? And yeah, I, think I, we I, need... think, I think what higher education now affords people is not actually an education. I think we should change the name if we, we should label it appropriately. What going to a Harvard uh, or say Yale or Stanford or whatever, what going to say a Harvard does for you is not necessarily the quality of education. Yes, there are great professors there. What it is, though, is about the quality of your social network and how much money they have. Yeah, That's what it b- boils down to. Which is just, again, it's the social status symbol. And I, I, when I was working, I worked for this investment banker. The guy had uh, his net worth was like half a billion dollars, and it was just him and like five or six of us. And I worked with a bunch of guys. Some of them were ex-Goldman guys, but all of them were ex-Harvard MBAs. And the reason they would tell me that they went to Harvard was the social network. Not because of the education they, they got, but because of the connections. And that's why those, of course, who don't care about that, right? If you want to do that, play that game, then sure, go, fine, have fun, and, and do well. But for those who care about actually the service of Education. I, I think, as you mentioned, the disruption, the paradigm shift, whatever you want to call it, that the Internet provides is so revolutionary. It cuts out the middleman. It completely, completely circumvents the system. People don't have to jump into the bubble. You can get it very cheap, if not free. And going back to the competency argument, by trade, I'm a web developer. Not once, even my job right out of college, has an employer cared about my degree, literally. <laughs> they wanted to know what you could do. They wanted to see my portfolio. They wanted to see what I've done what I was capable of, what technologies I knew. And so right now you can go to like lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A, and you can learn how to use you know, Photoshop or Illustrator, how to code in PHP, and you can sit there with video on demand. You basically get a private tutor at your own pace. You can rewind, you can replay. You can learn this stuff in your underwear at home <laughs> for super cheap. It completely, completely disrupts the current system. And to the extent that employers continue and increasingly recognize that the diploma doesn't matter, that we want to see people's portfolios or their references on previous jobs or can you do the job, that's really all that matters. A degree does not convey that, and I think we need to promote 
that distinction that ultimately the diploma is utterly meaningless. It says that you played the game, you took tests, you memorized facts, but can you do your job? And a diploma does not convey that. I would add maybe one other thing, one other benefit to the, the to spending, dropping that $100,000 on education when you're really buying the social network. I think the only other area where you kind of have to buy into the system is where the state intervenes. So you had mentioned like doctors. Well, sure. unfortunately you have to, to get a license, you have to go to a, a certain type of school. Right. And so in that state sense that, yes, if you're going to buy into this kind of state system, then you got to do that as well, unfortunately, uh, yeah. I- until we can really nail this licensing bull crap. Someday. <laughs> no, and you, ra- you raise a good point. Even then, I, I want to know that my doctor went to a lot of school. I want to know that he had a lot of educational experience and, and you know, time in the lab and things. You're going to feel reassured just by the fact that they went through all that. But uh, relying on that alone or, you know, if you're building a home, for example, the fact that your your builder has a construction a construction license doesn't mean anything. It means that the state says, okay, well, you know, this person has passed this certification or done this many hours. That doesn't mean they're going to build you a good home. And so we need to, as consumers, become better informed. We need to make sure that those with whom we're exchanging are competent and are going to give us a good return on our investment. To the extent that we reconnect consumer and producer and cut out the middleman, whether it is a legitimate middleman or a government uh, that's trying to abstract it and finance your loans for you, to the extent that we reconnect face-to-face these producers and consumers, there's more accountability, there's more uh, better reception and understanding of the service being offered. That's what we need to do. Yeah, you can't buy reputation. You can buy a degree, though. All right, Connor, I appreciate it, man. Good uh, good topic. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. All right, guys, come on back after the break. Are you ready for some fun? It's time to get out and play. Grab your kids, grandkids, and the kid in you. Experience the fun of radio-controlled cars, trucks, boats, and helicopters. Visit www.primehobbies.com, your online hobby store. We only stock main brand products. Traxxas Radio Control Cars and Trucks, HPI Racing, Align Helicopters, Team Associated, and Quest Aerospace. If you're tired of buying and buying and buying the discount store junk, stop by PrimeHobbies.com and purchase a vehicle that will last for years with parts support to keep you up and running. Let Prime Hobbies be your number one trusted online hobby superstore. For fun delivered right to your door, go to PrimeHobbies.com. That's www.primehobbies.com. Let the fun begin. www.primehobbies.com. Wake up without yuck in your lungs or the dark cloud of lung cancer or heart disease looming over your future. Have the energy and health you deserve by simply calling Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis at 801-738-5390. Forget what you've seen from TV and the movies. Hypnosis is powerful and natural and has been accepted by the American Medical Association since the 1950s. Our methods have proven time and again to be more effective than pills, patches, gum, and willpower for quitting smoking. If you've tried the rest, now call the best. Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. That's Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. Be sure to ask about our proven weight loss and natural breast enlargement programs. Visit us online at slchypnosis.com. You're listening to Utah's first number one talk station. K-Talk, AM 630, KTKK, Sandy, Salt Lake City. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. NBC News Radio, I'm Luke Russert on Capitol Hill. The White House slaps more sanctions on Iran. President Obama pledged to block Iran from developing a nuclear weapon and ramped up economic sanctions targeting the nation's oil sales and financial transactions. White House spokesperson Ben Rhodes. With today's actions, we are once again sending a strong message to the Iranian government. They are going to face increasingly severe consequences for failing to meet those international obligations. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta is in Egypt, where he met that country's new president for the first time. 
Panetta says he also met with military leaders and believes they will move their country toward democracy. They agree, you know, they would cooperate in every way possible to ensure that extremists uh, like al-Qaeda uh, are dealt with. And here at home, stocks lost ground today. The Dow lost 64 points. The S&P 500 ticked down six, and the Nasdaq fell six as well. This is NBC News Radio. Agreement on Capitol Hill. It's true. The top Republican and Democrat here on the Hill have agreed to steer clear of a government shutdown this fall. Here is Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. The Speaker and I and the President have agreed how we're going to fund the government for the next six months. It'll provide stability for the coming months. It'll be free of riders. And um, when we have this, this is very good. We can resolve these critical issues that directly affect the country um, soon as the election's over and move on to do good things. It puts us out of the way. Olympic spoiler alert. The U.S. women's gymnastics team won the gold medal. It's the first time since 1996. Russia took second and Romania won the bronze. Poolside Michael Phelps has equaled the record for most Olympic medals, but he did it with a silver. The star U.S. swimmer took second in the 200-meter butterfly. I'm Luke Russert, NBC News Radio. Hey guys, I want to give you an opportunity that you've never had before. My name is Ellen, and I'm an attorney talking to you about a medical breakthrough for men in the sexual health world that uses cutting-edge technology. This amazing product is called Rituxort, and the results have been remarkable on the subjects who were studied during case testing. Legally, all I'm allowed to say on the radio is that the before and after comparisons are nothing short of shocking. Be one of the first 50 callers right now and find out how to get Rituxort for free. Due to the private nature of Rituxor, we have created an identity protection program, which absolutely guarantees you that nobody will ever know you participated. Your name will never appear in any delivery, and there will be no emails or phone calls. As a matter of fact, we won't even ask you for your name when you call. Shocking before and afters. 800-434-4502. Your identity is completely protected. 800-434-4502. That's 800-434-4502 right now. There are few things in life as debilitating as a severe headache, whether it's caused from stress, anxiety, depression, or too much to drink. There is a remedy. How would you like to get rid of a headache before it happens? Migralex is the answer. Migralex will not only get rid of your headache, it will help prevent headaches from the start. I'm Dr. Mauskop. I have been studying headaches as a neurologist for 25 years, and I know the effects they can have on the person. I have developed Migralex to free people from the pain and keep them from getting headaches. Migralex worked so fast, I almost forgot. I even had a headache. I never thought anything could save me from getting bad headaches. With Migrolex, I'm headache free. I know Migrolex will free you from headache pain, and I guarantee it. Call 800 507 6836 to learn how you can get a free bottle and see how it can work for you. That's 800 507 6836. Stop suffering with headaches today. Act now. Call 800 507 6836 or go to Migrolex.com. That's M I G R A L E X.com. Hey, this is Dan the Laptop Man from PC Laptops. Here's what happened to poor Eddie who bought one of those other brands of computers for school. Oh, Mom, Dad, I started smoking crack and my teeth fell out. And I don't bathe anymore because the crappy computer we got from the big box store has been in Chumbawamba for repair for the whole semester. Help me, Mommy! Here's what happened to Billy, whose parents bought him a PC Laptops computer with a lifetime service warranty. Mom, Dad... I've got a 4.0, and I've got a full-ride scholarship. I'm also eating all my vegetables. At this rate, you won't have to worry about retirement because my success has you taken care of. What a wise investment. I love you guys. Show your student or faculty ID and get an extra $100 off any new computer. And to make it extra fluffy, we're doing zero down, zero interest for a year on any new computer. OAC, call us at 1-877-596-SAVE or check us out at PCLaptops.com. PCLaptops.com. PC Laptops, we love you. Politicians may try to convince you that they can create jobs, but the cold fact is that politicians don't create jobs. Entrepreneurs do. Are you barely surviving in this economy but want to learn how to thrive in this economy? Are you tired of the rat race and burn with the desire to be your own boss? We've all heard the parable that if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. But if you teach that man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. Are you ready to learn how to fish? 
Join proven entrepreneur, best-selling author, and host of Mental Self-Defense Radio, Jake Shannon, at the upcoming weekend bootstrap entrepreneurship training right here in Salt Lake City. This bootstrap entrepreneurship boot camp is strictly limited to only 15 participants and is offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Learn more now at www.entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. That's entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. Entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. Forget everything else for a moment and pay very close attention to the words you're about to hear. Something is wrong with your reality. Big government, big business, the mainstream media, and orthodox science all tell you what to believe. Yet the holes in their stories only get bigger every day. Welcome to your wake-up call. Welcome to your red pill. Welcome to Mental Self-Defense Radio and the Jake Shannon Radio Program. Now, here's your host, Jake Shannon. All right, guys, welcome back. The last hour for today, Mental Self-Defense Radio. Going to get a little bit back into that LIBOR. Why is it important? I, I'm telling you, the guys, there's going to be distractions. We got the Olympics. We got the Batman shooting. We got all these crazy things distracting us. The flip-flop Romney, Obama, I mean, they're all the same. Whatever. This is one of those times where you need to keep your eye on the prize. Uh, one quick thing that I think is related for those of you who are liberty-minded. Uh, Michael Phelps, United States athlete, officially now is uh, the most decorated Olympian ever. He has the most Olympic medals ever. And as a libertarian, uh, I have to say, you know, I find it ironic all these people complaining about marijuana or whatever and he had that run in I don't know <laughs> the situation all I know is that he got busted for a bong or something I, I, I just want to put that out to all you idiot drug warriors the pinnacle of human achievement <laughs> and he doesn't care about it so why don't you let it go how about that alright now I want to get back to uh, Tim Geithner found a, uh, a nice article where basically Tim Geithner is admitting about how the big banks were bailed out at these rigged LIBOR rates. How that not only affects everybody, the, the fixing, the price fixing on LIBOR not only affects every single person who's had a student loan or a car loan, the way the, these loans that are pegged to LIBOR. But this also costs taxpayers billions of dollars because of the bailout. Did you know that? Well, you do now. How can a number that you know has been manipulated, how can that possibly be the best choice? Well, again, uh, we were concerned about this, and we did the important, very consequential thing of bringing it to the attention of the full complement of regulatory authorities that Congress has given responsibility and authority for market manipulation and abuse and but you weren't obligated to use it the new york fed was not obligated to use libor yes or no no of, uh, of course not but but okay but we had to make a basic choice among alternatives at that time and i think that was the right choice back then I, between I, a manipulated number and a he's saying that he knew that it was manipulated and he still went with it this is this is jail time people this is fraud right there testimony orange jumpsuit a non-manipulated number. No, again, I wouldn't say it that way. I would say this was a rate that was structured in a way that was vulnerable to misreporting. We were very concerned about Apparently. that, and we decided, what we decided to do was to try to initiate a reform of the process. And yet they still used the rate. <laughs> they still went with the lie. Now, look. In a transaction, there is a buyer and there is a seller, and this goes for loans. There's a debtor and a creditor. And so there were debtors who benefited by having a lower uh, variable or floating rate on their loans that were pegged to LIBOR. 
So in some ways, there are those instances where they were cheating themselves, but you have to understand, this is a net game. They balance it out. So maybe they took some small losses there, but then they reaped huge rewards. How does that work? How does that work? How could they benefit from this? Well, one of the things is they want to make sure because they own assets. Now, a lot of these assets are valued on balance sheets. According to mark to market uh, modeling, which is should be called mark to model, it's not actually a market value. So it, eva- it affects the balance sheets. But you have to understand there's there's an inverse relationship between bonds and their in, their bond price and the interest rate. The lower the interest rate, the higher the price of the bond. Prices of debt instruments, the price of the debt instrument, they move in a similar way in the opposite direction of interest rates. Okay? So if you have a low interest rate, that means your bond price is going to be high. So the, the effect of manipulating the, the, the LIBOR rate in a lower fashion allowed these banks to prop up the price of their bonds. Um, asset-backed uh, financial instruments. It made their balance sheets look better. Do you get it? This pushed up the value of bonds and asset-backed securities. This is manipulation. This ripples out and affects every single one of us. Now, it gets very complicated. There is a huge number of interest rate swaps. A swap is a financial instrument that allows you to swap out. If you have a risk to a variable or a floating rate, you could swap that with somebody, a counterparty who wants to say, you know what, I want to take that risk. Maybe rates will move wildly in my favor and they have a fixed rate and they can't take advantage of that. So you find somebody and you swap. All of this is they're pushing these bond rates, these bond prices, I'm sorry, higher. So you can see that in effect, the Bank of England, the Fed, these U.S. banks, they got bailed out. By doing this, 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 this price fixing, are propping up these bond markets that might have otherwise been driven down by this addition of new debt that they keep issuing. This is why people can't understand this. They're having a hard time understanding why despite these low yields, the demand for bonds are up. I mean, you even have people doing what's called negative interest rates. Negative interest rates. Do you you grasp what that concept means? That means somebody's paying you for taking out, renting their money. That'd be like a negative rent when you go, somebody pays you to live in their house. What a deal. How awesome. It's like house sitting. This is huge. And again, there's a bit of debt, there's a bit of deflation, and there's a bit of derivatives. These are the three prongs to my book, Endonomics, that's coming up. So now we have Tim Geithner admitting he knew 
and didn't do anything and as a matter of fact used it jail time Fuck. so what is he above the law really ask yourself that and we'll find out what happens because if he doesn't go to jail then yes there is that and that is our own failure for not raising up a stink You care about fairness? Laws should be applied across the board equally. Nobody, whether it's Tim Geithner or O.J. Simpson, whether you're rich and famous or not. We also know that uh, an executive over at Barclays, uh, who's at the center of this interest rate uh, rigging scandal, got a payoff of like over $10 million. Here I'm re- looking at uh, the UK Telegraph article coming out uh, the 25th of July by Alastair Osborne and Jamie Dunkley. This guy's name is Jer- Jerry Del Messier. M-I-S-S-I-E-R for those of you who want to go to your favorite search engine and look him up. Mr. Del Messier, the bank's former chief operating officer who resigned three weeks ago, is understood to have negotiated the deal with Barclays, this payoff. Outgoing chairman Marcus Agius in the days before he quit. The payout looks certain to trigger another political storm over bankers' pay. Mr. Del Messier was one of Barclays' highest paid executives, receiving a salary and bonus package for 2011 worth £6.7 million, pound, plus a further £10.8 million pound from share awards from previous years. Now remember, the pound is trading at like a pound 50 for every dollar. So that 6.7 million, that's close to 10 million a year, just in compensation. And that 10 million in share awards, that's like $15 million. In 2011 alone, uh, continues, he became co-head of the investment bank in 2011 uh, when former chief executive Bob Diamond was promoted to the top job but emerged as a leading figure in the LIBOR rigging scandal. Only last week, Canadian uh, Del, Mr. Del Messier conceded to MPs on the Treasury Select Committee that he had told Barclay traders to lower the bank's LIBOR submissions in the autumn of 2008. Wow. That followed a controversial telephone call between Mr. Diamond and Paul Tucker, the deputy governor of the Bank of England. The Bank of England is the UK's equivalent of the Federal Reserve. Mr. Del Messier revealed how Mr. Diamond had clearly told him in October 2008 to, quote, get our LIBOR rates down. Quote, I passed the instruction on to the head of the the money market desk, he said. I relayed the content of the conversation I had with Mr. Diamond and fully expected the Bank of England uh, views would be fully incorporated into the LIBOR submission. I expected that they would take those views into account, end quote. Grilled over whether he knew the action was illegal, he said, quote, at the time, it did not seem an inappropriate action, given that this was coming from the Bank of England. (laughs) Oh, man. Mr. Del Messier's $8.7 million payoff is thought to be the price for him dropping claims to as much as 40 million pounds worth of potential share awards still outstanding, which are subject to clawback provisions, which usually, if there's an ethical problem, that's uh, a clawback will allow the company to take back those shares. News of this golden goodbye package came as Barclays was rocked by its fourth major resignation in less than a month with the departure of Allison Carnwath, head of, or Carnath, head of the bank's remuneration uh, committee. She was outraged shareholders, she outraged shareholders by approving a 17 million pound pay package for Mr. Diamond, including a 2.7 million annual bonus. She said was no longer Uh, She said she was no longer able to devote sufficient time to the bank. Oh, how convenient. These are the criminals. This is why you are having a hard time getting a job, why money is scarce, credit is scarce. Corruption at the highest levels, guys. Call in number 801-254-5855. Come on back after the break. Are you ready for some fun? It's time to get out and 
play. Grab your kids, grandkids, and the kid in you. Experience the fun of radio-controlled cars, trucks, boats, and helicopters. Visit www.primehobbies.com, your online hobby store. We only stock main brand products. Traxxas radio-controlled cars and trucks, HPI Racing, Align Helicopters, Team Associated, and Quest Aerospace. If you're tired of buying and buying and buying the discount store junk, stop by PrimeHobbies.com and purchase a vehicle that will last for years with parts support to keep you up and running. Let Prime Hobbies be your number one trusted online hobby superstore. For fun delivered right to your door, go to PrimeHobbies.com. That's www.primehobbies.com. Let the fun begin. www.primehobbies.com. Are you feeling weighed down by clutter? Let Town Storage help you lighten up. Using a storage unit is a great way to organize your home so you can experience clutter-free living. If you're trying to sell your home or having family over for the holidays, a storage unit can really help open up your house for a quick sell or to make room for all the relatives. Town Storage has new lower prices and an on-site manager. You have 24-hour management, security, video surveillance. Town Storage is great. It's right off the freeway. There's an electronic gate. The driveways are nice and wide, so you're not having to squeeze your truck in. In fact, they can accommodate a whole 53-foot tractor trailer. They're open seven days a week, and they even have business discounts. Wherever you live in Utah, there's a town storage near you. Visit townstorage.com. That's town with an E, storage.com or call 800-716-8917. That's 1-800-716-8917. You're over 40, having trouble reading street signs, driving is getting scary, and reading isn't fun anymore. Sound familiar? Yeah, well, that's the curse of cataracts. I know, I went through it. Then I went to the Eye Institute of Utah, and in a matter of minutes, the problem was solved. No pain, no discomfort, and by that evening, I had the vision I'd enjoyed as a teenager. Years ago, cataract surgery was a huge deal. Now, thanks to modern LensX laser technology, the whole procedure's over in a matter of minutes with no pain or discomfort, and Medicare pays most of the cost. Don't trust your vision to just anyone. You want the very best, and for me, that was Dr. Sioni and the other highly trained specialists at the Eye Institute of Utah. They've done thousands of successful procedures, and they're so advanced that other doctors come from all over the world to study under their guidance. Call now for a free evaluation, 801-803-6968. That's 801-803-6968. Call 801-803-6968 now for a free evaluation. The Voice of Utah, AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. Hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? All right, guys, welcome back to Mental Self-Defense Radio. Uh, I am your host. Let's go to the phones. Uh, caller, you are on the air. What's your name? My name is Joyce Schaefer. I'm calling for Tim Alders. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, his show ended like uh, three hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, call in the mornings because he's on in the mornings. All right. Thank o you. Okay, thanks, Joyce. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> See, this is what happens when I don't get a uh, phone screener. So clearly she hadn't even been uh, listening on the radio because I don't think I sound like Tim. I know I certainly don't look like Tim. I guess that has pluses and negatives to it, and, and that's a whole other discussion. Uh, excited to hear that Tim is... Uh, I found this out yesterday. I, because I've been gone, I didn't know, but I guess he's taking up the mantle to run uh, for lieutenant governor for the Constitution uh, Party. Kind of exciting. That's kind of cool. Uh, we got another caller. Let's see. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name? My name's Frank. Hi, Frank. What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to make a comment. I didn't uh, want to call in when you had the Du Bois Act report going on. but Oh, yeah. Um, you know, back in my undergraduate studies, um, I actually wrote a paper about education and the value of education and, and made it comparative um, looking at your top 25 schools versus, you know, the run-of-the-mill school, you might say. Yeah. And it was interesting the paper has no that using you know my undergraduate training it shows no significant value by going to one of those harvard versus going to weber state um university 
because they're all accredited through the same program and have to meet all the same requirements. A lot of schools use all the same textbooks. Um, <laughs> so much like you mentioned, yeah, the, the, link, the LinkedIn or social networking aspect of going to one of those schools is, is in their top 25, sure makes you look better, but your education isn't of any more value uh, on paper than it is versus some of these un, you know, top 2,000 schools. But it's amazing that social aspect and the stigma behind it that we, we can't seem to get over. Yeah, I, I think that you're right. I think that the education part of the education um, right. is pretty much the same because you're going to have crappy pe- uh, teachers everywhere and you're going to have great teachers everywhere from high, you know, like in Princeton or Harvard or whatever, and you're going to have them same in the, in the you know, these other. That's going to, I think, be accepted. But I do think the real difference is is, is the social network because, you know, obviously you go to school with a bunch of rich kids they're going to have a bunch of different opportunities than, say, somebody who went to Weber State. Definitely, and that's, I mean, just, I just wanted to add in that it's that social value, um, they pay a price for it, they pay a premium for that, that social value, but um, their education, per se, isn't any better than the other person that went to a different school that didn't, uh, you know, have that social advantage because of their, their economic status. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think, and I think that uh, I'm hoping the young people start to see that, and and even maybe even realize that it's you know what, even the lower tier schools because that's outrageously expensive these days as well. Maybe Definitely. they'll go, take one of these other routes and heck, just start a business and be the boss to start out, you know, and then go hire somebody from from Utah State or something. Well, there was always that saying I remember that the 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 A student are usually hired by the C student out in the real world. So you may be getting straight A's, but you're going to be hired by the guy that got the C's and D's because they're the ones that become the entrepreneurs. They're the ones that take the risk because they don't, they just do. And then they hire people smarter than them to become successful. Yeah, I mean, that, that really <laughs> is the bottom line. And, you know, the funny thing is, is so much of it is about taking that risk, about just saying, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm going to try to provide this service, and you do a good enough job, and you build a little business, and then, like you said, you hire somebody who's smarter than you, but you're still in control because you own it. Exactly. Hey, thanks for your show. I appreciate it, Jake. All right, all right buddy. Don't be a stranger. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, call in number 801-254-5855. Uh, you're going to want to stay tuned. Uh, Mills is going to be up. Uh, he's going to have a gentleman by the name of Dan Peterson. He follows, uh, Mills follows me for drive time. Uh, so Dan Peterson is going to talk about this fair conference in August, LDS Apologetics, how there are answers to the critics. Um, also, Mills says how to see through anti-Mormon tactics now being used to vilify Mormons because of negative campaigning against Mitt Romney. Uh, interesting. Uh, it, which brings me kind of back to this LIBOR scandal um, I want to read the rest of this article from Telegraph UK. Uh, we're talking about just this nonsense. At the very end, they actually mentioned Mitt Romney. Uh, it says, on Wednesday night, Barclays was also seeking to put distance between itself and donations made to U.S. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney's election campaign by some of the bank's executives. Uh, Barclays head of UK and European government re- relations, Cyrus Ardalan is said to have written to MPs uh, stressing that any fundraising or political activity was carried out in a personal capacity. Oh, yes, of course it is, people. Uh, as if there's no connection between the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England, the Treasury, and these giant mega corporations that benefited from the bailouts. Yes, we are completely stupid idiots, and we forget the second that you guys commit a crime. <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. Um, so this LIBOR scandal is not going away. Again, what I'm looking for is that connection. If you have it, maybe, I, you know, I'd like to unleash you, the loyal listener of Mental Self-Defense Radio. I'd like to unleash your researching abilities. See if you can find anything better than just hearsay and just conspiracy website speculation. Can you find anything about James Holmes, his father, now, James Holmes being the Batman uh, shooter or alleged shooter. Um, 
Can you find out anything about his father, Robert Holmes, who's the senior lead scientist for uh, FICO, the Fair Isaac Corporation? And I'm curious if you have any information about him being a expert witness in a Senate testimony about this LIBOR scandal. That's what I'm trying to find is actually some sort of itinerary about this hearing before the Senate with Robert Holmes, who's the father. Again, this father uh, did work in FICO exposing fraud. He had he created algorithms that exposed fraud in um, financial transactions. So I, I, I need to find that out because to me that'll connect some dots personally um, if find me on Facebook you can uh, email me off of the website that kind of thing but that's the piece of information that I that I really will put me over the edge going from spe- speculation more towards this really needs to be looked into deeper now are you watching the Olympics I didn't see the opening uh the opening of the Olympics, but I guess it, it was somewhat controversial. All this weirdness, these uh, dead babies, and <laughs> I don't. Did you watch that? Did it freak you out? We had a caller yesterday. Uh, anyway, the call in number. We got about a half hour. Eight zero one two five four fifty eight fifty five. I know I'm excited personally to watch the wrestling at the Olympics in London. You know, the United States always has a a strong showing there. Looks like the USA uh, Gymnastics showed really well. But, you know, I'm I'm actually not that huge of a fan of the Olympics per se, as I am the athletes themselves are cool. And I guess it's a a good uh, showpiece. But, um, I don't know, are you even watching it? I did find myself watching the gymnastics the other night. And it's it's fun. It's it's cool to to know these incredible athletes. <clears throat> Again, I was shocked. Now I don't know if the medal count has changed, but a little tiny country of Italy came in third with medal counts. China was number one, the U.S. number two, and Italy was third. Now this was yesterday. I don't know if things changed overnight, but uh, fascinating stuff. I'm you know for me the wrestling is going to be. I'm so excited. I've un- that doesn't happen, I guess, for like 10 days or 11 days or something, at least the men's. I know the, uh, the judo has been going as well. Now, does the whole Batman thing, does it rub you the wrong way too? I mean, I certainly, it just something seems really weird about it. I don't know. I just can't seem to shake it. And I could be wrong. I mean, you know, I'm... I'm open-minded. But, excuse me, I'm also a little, I get a chuckle when I think of Michael Phelps, who's the most decorated Olympian in all of history, and kind of the harassment he was given over, you know, I think he had a bong or something like that. I, I find that a little ridiculous. What do you think? 801-254-5855. Uh, let's go to the phones. Caller, you are on the air. What is your name? Yes, this is Troy Jake. Oh, hey, what's up, Troy? Well, not much. Uh, I was I wanted to mention this the other day. Did you ever read that article about uh, that Judge Kittle, is it, that uh, spells out part of Obamacare? No. What, t- uh, what, what, what was, what's the deal? I don't even, oh, I'm not familiar it, with it. it. It's pretty scary. He has it. Le- he has it listed on page number and everything. It it talks about. I mean, I'm pulling into my garage. I'm getting off the street. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it talks about the doctors. All the doctors will be paid the same, regardless of what their uh, what their profession is. Oh, on really? Page so there's going to forty one to two fifty three. It says cancer hospitals will be retained uh, according to the patient's age when you hit 75 you will not be liable i mean uh, you will not be able to have cancer treatments and when you hit 75 you will also be 
recommended by law to take a death uh, seminar every five years. What, for like, death. Wait, wait, wait. What, a death seminar? A death seminar. What, what yeah, does that for, mean? That means that you have to prepare to die, apparently. They're After 75? Leave. Of course, politicians, yeah, politicians can live forever because they get insurance forever. Uh, this is this is actually down in, if you want, I can give you the website where he spells it out. Yeah, so wait a minute. What, what is the name again of this person? It's, it's Judge Kittle, uh, K-I-T-H-I-L. K-I-T-H-I-L? H-I-L, and he has a website. It's www healthcare.gov slash law slash fool and it also talks about uh, see where is it? the government has access to your checking account at any time to remove any amount of money they, they see fit now now Troy here's the one thing just my first thing that popped up Do you, are you familiar with the snopes.com website uh huh so supposedly there's a whole thing where they're, they've gone through line by line at Snopes about Judge Kittle or Kittle or whatever his name is. And I, I don't know that it's true. The, the website that you're reading, it seems like they've been able to document that it's actually uh, not true. It's Snopes? Yeah, if you go to Snopes.com, actually the website is Snopes.com slash politics slash medical slash and then Kithill uh, or Kithill. K I T H I L. And it says everything he says is not true. Yeah, it's saying that that, that whatever that is is uh, has been proven false, and then they get the origins of how kind of this urban legend or whatever started. Well, it's interesting because he has he has it right down to the page, and the line and everything. Yeah, and they counter argue with the line and the pages. Like they have page fifty, section one fifty two. The bill will provide insurance to all U.S. non-residents, even if they're here illegally. Yeah. He, he's he's got this where it doesn't. I mean, I don't know. I don't have the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, in front of me, so I can't vet it. But for those people who might be interested, uh, they should look into it. And this is certainly worthy. I'm glad you're bringing it up because this is something we should look into. But it seems that there might be counter evidence uh, that that may not be true. So well, for I'll what that's worth. That I just would think that if it's all down here line by line, uh how how much weight do you put into this Snoops or whatever it's called? You know, Snopes is interesting. They're largely correct, but I'm still somewhat, you know, I wonder where they get their funding at times and what they're, if they have a particular agenda. I don't know, but I have found that uh, when I'm researching things, I will tend to look there, especially the more squirrely, outrageous stuff, and they usually have decent documentation and... and, and um, and on there you're reading that it says this Judge Kittle, Kittle is uh, pretty much... A quack or what? Uh, that yeah, that it's uh, that it's not true. Basically, list uh, that this list provides an accurate line item criticism of Obamacare, uh, and it says with a big red color, false. And then they go through, they present what you're talking about, what he says, and uh-huh. then they as they scroll down, they show the the counterpoint to it. You understand? What do you mean? What it really says, or is it? Look, I can't, you know, I, we're losing audience members by the drove as I try to get into the details. Oh, Just check it, mind, check it out over at Snopes. Okay, good if you enough, go to Snopes.com you. and type in that guy's last name, K-I-T-H-I-L, the one you spelled okay, to me, it's good. right there. And let me know. Maybe you find, you'll find a hole in the Snopes argument. But just okay. to, to, maybe that'll let you breathe a little easier <laughs> tonight. Well, that would be nice. I hope you're right and I'm wrong. But uh, Well, it doesn't mean there aren't scary. plenty of other things for us to keep our eyes on as well. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks, Jake. All right, Troy. Take care. Thanks for the call, buddy. Yeah, you know, look, we don't know. It's still good. He could be right. This is where you have to be able to learn to learn and know how to research, know how to vet information so you can make your own judgment. Um, uh, I'm reading here about the Snopes response. Yeah, it, it says that it's uh, these criticisms are, it's kind of a viral email, like a chain letter, and that's not necessarily true. All right, guys, come on back after the break. Last segment here before uh, we hit Mills' show. Phone number, 801-254-5855. Give us a call. Anything. Lines are open. Whatever you want to talk about. Come on back after the break.
Politicians may try to convince you that they can create jobs, but the cold fact is that politicians don't create jobs, entrepreneurs do. Are you barely surviving in this economy but want to learn how to thrive in this economy? Are you tired of the rat race and burn with the desire to be your own boss? We've all heard the parable that if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. But if you teach that man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. Are you ready to learn how to fish? Join proven entrepreneur, best-selling author, and host of Mental Self-Defense Radio, Jake Shannon, at the upcoming weekend bootstrap entrepreneurship training right here in Salt Lake City. This bootstrap entrepreneurship boot camp is strictly limited to only 15 participants and is offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Learn more now at www.entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com. That's entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com entrepreneurship.jakeshannon.com Over 20 million Americans suffer from a life-threatening health risk known as obstructive sleep apnea. For people with OSA, snoring through a bad night's sleep can contribute to heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, sexual dysfunction, and shorten your lifespan by 8 to 10 years. You need Dr. Miles Preble, the OSA dentist. He's helped hundreds of folks like you or a loved one with this problem. Call 801-278-4787. 801-278-4787. Remember, when you laugh, the world laughs with you. Snore, and you sleep alone. Gung Ho promotes brain health and retention of normal cognitive functions with aging. Gung Ho doesn't just improve brain energy, focus, and memory recall. It supports overall brain health and cognition. Find Gung Ho at k-talk.com. Eat like focus. The voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. You say goodbye and I say hello. Hello, hello. I don't know why you say hello. All right, guys, welcome back. Home stretch. 801-254-5855. So much going on. So much to distract us. And again... You know, I, I really do consider myself an apocalyptic optimist. I, I'm looking forward to this, uh, this coming collapse because, I mean, look at the British Empire. Look at the British Empire. You, you've heard, well, I don't know. If you're a student of history, you've heard the sun never sets on the British Empire. What they were saying is they were everywhere. And think about it. They were in India. They were in, uh, I mean, all over Australia, everywhere. Canada was a British colony. The United States started out that way. The sun never set on the British Empire. And yet it collapsed. And yet the UK is stronger than it's ever been before. The pound, they never, they wisely stayed out of the euro. The European Union stayed independent. And the UK is strong. I was just there. I went from the UK, which has the pound, to Italy that has a euro. Like night and day. Now, I'm not saying that the UK is, their economy is outstanding, <coughs> but relative to other countries, so maybe not restore, uh, uh, outstanding historically relative in recent couple decades, maybe. But relative to the other countries, like Italy, the other countries in the European Union, like Greece, they're hosed. And yet the UK is no longer that empire and they're doing great. And I think that is the path that will likely happen for the United States. Like like a phoenix rising out of the ashes. The albatross of empire has been dragging us down, down, down. All these ridiculous deficit, deficit spending politicians Spending your money, my money, our children's money. Going deeper and deeper into debt and not having any culpability or responsibility for that debt themselves. Pushed us to the brink and they're going to push us over the brink. I estimate between 2020 and 2025. Although it could happen earlier. There could be some sort of X event. That's a book I would highly recommend. 
how we started out this show today with uh, John Casty, PhD, joined all the way from Austria, he called us. Brilliant guy. He's done work with um, Santa Fe Institute. Was faculty over at Princeton, NYU. PhD in mathematics, a complexity scientist, talking about X events, these, these events that we don't expect, the unknown unknowns. I check it out. X events is the name of the book. X dash events, the collapse of any of everything by John Casty. And yes, it is rather. Do you know the the book is like a giant flame on it, and it's you know foreboding. But again, talking to him, he's like me. He's an apocalyptic. He thinks that you know sometimes these X events are the best thing that could have ever happened. They allow us to recalibrate our understandings, our models of the universe, of how we interact with other human beings, these paradigms that we so often maybe find ourselves trapped in. So I check it out. I know his website, he said it's uh, a bit bare bones, xevents.com, no dash. But I, this book, I found, uh, I found out about him while doing research for my own book about a particular collapse, the collapse of the American Empire, Endonomics, but his website xevents.com and again the book x-events or you can look him up online in your favorite search engine, type in x-events and then his name, John Casty, and a ton of reviews come up from, uh, as he mentioned, the blogosphere, a bit of a buzz about it and he really talks about all kinds of cool stuff, the likelihood of and what would happen, you know, if the internet collapsed or if the food supply system collapsed or if an EMP went off and destroyed all electronics. I mean, this is, it's a cool book. So also he talks about the global financial markets, all kinds of things. It's really a great book. I would highly recommend it. Uh, in my forthcoming book, I'm going to have a list of books. I think that you, it's imperative that you read to get a better understanding, a better grasp of the world in which we live with a particular emphasis this time on financial economics, on the global economy, and this will certainly be one of those books, X events. And my editor is pressuring me, she's telling me she wants the final draft of this book in by next Friday, so I'm aiming actually to have it this Friday into her, get it back from her in a couple weeks, done and ready for you to read. I think this will be important to read before the elections. I will be sending it out to some of the more influential political people I know because I think this is maybe a perspective that they have not quite either heard or contemplated yet. And that's what I've done. I've digested the food for you, <laughs> as gross as that might sound. Because there's certainly, it, it is, in my opinion, as near as certainty as anything. And it comes from distortions. And what I mean by distortions is a non-fidelity to a signal. Now, the genius in this field actually shares my last name. We have no genetic relationship as far as I know. I don't know, maybe Ancestry.com or something could solve that. <laughs> But uh, Claude Shannon is the inventor of information theory from Bell Labs. You can thank him for your cell phone. You can thank him for your computer. You can thank him for the internet. You can thank him for anything having to do with the transmission of information electronically. He came up with a theory for it using entropy. Now him and a few other people like Norbert Wiener a few other mathematicians, but it was really uh, Claude Shannon who really contributed the lion's share of the work here. But I think the fidelity to a signal with regards to communications is essential, as Claude Shannon proved. 
which unleashed again the information age. But this goes for any information system, and the economy is no different. What do you think the price system is? What do you think prices convey? Information. And manipulation and lying and distortions, whether it's the LIBOR rigging the, uh, the LIBOR interest rate, the banks rigging that to prop up bond values, asset-backed security values on the balance sheets of these banks, whether it's monetary manipulations by somebody like the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England, inflation or deflation. These distortions are, I don't want to get too heavy, but the prime evil, and I mean two words, prime evil of our time, of the information age. These distortions, but it happens in language. This is why I open up every show saying we're shrinking that gap between rhetoric and reality. Those distortions in linguistics and in English are known as trope, T-R-O-P-E. Those distortions in price are known as fiat currency and off-balance sheet transactions and mark-to-market accounting. Trope. Happens in the medical field. Any time where things seem to be upside down. And we certainly live in that world today, don't we? Banks are destroying the financial system. Doctors are the third leading cause of death after heart disease and cancer, according to the Journal of the American Medical Association, the largest peer-reviewed journal on the planet. The land of the free incarcerates more people than even communist China. Something's wrong, and it has to do with about the fidelity of the signal. Let's go to the phones before we wrap up here. Uh, caller, you are on the air. What is your name? Welcome. Uh, I'm Kathy, and I just wanted to get the name of that book you were talking about. Oh, uh, so we had the guy on the show today. I think that's what you're talking about. The name of the book is X, like the number X, and then uh-huh. events, E-V-E-N-T-S, X events. Oh, thank you very much. And yeah, his, and his, his last name, uh, ma'am, is Casti, C-A-S-T-I. I got that part, and I couldn't find him, so thank you very much. Yeah, enjoy it. It really is an incredible book. Uh, highly recommend it. Thanks for the call. I appreciate your show. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. It's about a fidelity to a signal. Words. And not just words. Your word. The importance of fidelity. What is an agreement? What is a vow? If not a word that's congruent with reality and what will happen is best to your ability. A contract. And when you start to wiggle around and distort those, you create all kinds of problems. This is not controversial. Now, we could use all the inkhorn terms and the scientific sounding jargon that we want to, but when you boil it down, this is all an ethical issue. About the words we use or the ways that we communicate. And being honest about how much, how close are those words to reality? Knowing the knowns, knowing the unknowns and the unknown unknowns. (laughs) And being honest about those things. Being okay with certainty. Not faking it if you don't know what happens. Being honest about the limits of knowledge and whether that's something you know or knowing the limits of knowledge when somebody's telling you a load of BS. We live now in the information age. The very base, the very bottom 
of what you need to know is again what I like to call mental self-defense that is an understanding of even the most basic critical reasoning and that is just studying at first the informal fallacies you can type that into a search engine informal fallacies and understanding them and then moving on to, to bigger understandings of statistics and logic and all the while also educating yourself about social engineering how you can be manipulated by not just the government by Madison Avenue they make a lot of money doing that selling you a bunch of crap you don't need but that crap isn't just in the market sometimes so a lot of times it's in politics and sometimes you need to realize that there it isn't a choice between red and blue. The choice is between the government and you. Who's really on your side? The answers are out there. You just got to ask the right questions and then have to be able to vet the answers. And you might have a slightly different answer than I come to, but that's for your life, your family, your goals, and that's okay. Because all we're pushing for here with this, with this idea of, of not only any kind of self-defense, but mental self-defense is just how to live best and peaceably amongst each other. How can we just get along given all of our weird differences and the things that we like that are different, and I like chocolate and you like strawberry, and who cares, it doesn't really matter as long as it's peaceful and honest. All right, guys, come on back tomorrow. More mental self-defense. Got some great guests lined up in the next week or so. Check us out over uh, our archives over at k-talk.com. Okay, see you guys tomorrow. Are you ready for some fun? It's time to get out and play. Grab your kids, grandkids, and the kid in you. Experience the fun of radio-controlled cars, trucks, boats, and helicopters. Visit www.primehobbies.com, your online hobby store. We only stock main brand products. Traxxas radio-controlled cars and trucks, HPI Racing, Align Helicopters, Team Associated, and Quest Aerospace. If you're tired of buying and buying and buying the discount store junk, stop by PrimeHobbies.com and purchase a vehicle that will last for years with parts support to keep you up and running. Let Prime Hobbies be your number one trusted online hobby superstore.